Greetings and welcome to another episode of Soul Talk, where we talk to our citizens and members of the community. Today is November, November 11th, uh, 2021, at least in North and South America again. I'm always going to do that joke. Uh, girlfriend, how are you doing? Pretty good. How about you, my friend? I'm doing well. Can you see me on the stream at, at the moment? Can I see you? Yeah, I'm looking at you. Why? You notice anything different? Uh, you know, I got this little screen. I'm not at home. <laughs> I can't see that good. Look, look, I can look, barely uh, look at my see background. your background. All right, let me see. What's your background? Hold on, let me make this big. New chair. Oh, look at you. Styling. <laughs> nice. When did you get that? I got it on Saturday, and it took me three hours to put together. It was a 15-minute job, but it took me three hours. <laughs> nice. Nice. Is it comfortable? Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. I, um, I got is it, it Is it an office an chair? Is it an yeah, office, office chair or a gaming chair. chair? Yeah, a lot of people go with the office chairs because they're more comfortable for a lot of people. So that's cool. Yeah, it cool. is comfortable for me. Cause plus, um, a gaming chair didn't really get a good, 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 good review, so I went with the office mm -hmm. chair. The thing is, yesterday, I tried to tilt the seat back using the mm -hmm. little knob on the bottom, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh well. Yeah, I can't have anything. Well, but, but you're looking nice and stylish. How old was the old chair? 2015. Oh, oh it wasn't that bad. It, Six it's years. Rad. You saw how old, how old the leather and stuff is, <laughs> not, well, the fake leather, leather was vinyl. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> it was fake leather. Yeah, okay. Well, that's cool. Well, congratulations. Hopefully, you'll be able to sit in it for another six years with no problem. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, the only time I really want to lean back is when I'm watching a movie or watching that, so that's no problem. I got you. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. And good evening, everybody, too. I didn't get to say good evening. Good evening, everybody. Glad to have you all here. Uh, Mo, man, you want to know if we um have Spotify or SoundLive? We go to iTunes and Spotify, if I'm correct? We go to, no, we go to SoundCloud and iTunes. Yeah. SoundCloud, okay. Yeah, SoundCloud and iCloud. We know what we don't do this show on there. I guess we oh, okay. could start doing that because we just do the main show. But there's really no reason why we can't do this one as well. So maybe we'll start trans transferring this one. Oh, over we were talking well. about the new soul sound song. My bad. Oh, 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 yeah, oh. New soul. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. See, we don't want to steal their thunder from them. Yeah. yeah we don't the, want to maybe, steal their definitely. We'll so find out what. I, I, I got a new chair. How about how do you your week, Ben? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's been a busy week. Um, you know, we got a lot of cool stuff to talk about tonight because it's been real busy with Star Citizen. So I'm pretty excited uh, as we're getting closer and closer to IAE, right? Just a, yeah, a week away. Seven days. Yeah. Yeah, oh, seven days, days, seven whole day. days. Is it eight days? Yeah, eight <laughs> days. Yeah, eight days. Yeah, we're almost there. Yeah. So are you ready for me to do my thing? Yeah, let's hear what you got. Statement. Fast card FC, ready to serve, master. Query, I don't tend to call you master. I was under the assumption that all organic meat bags such as yourself enjoy that such forms of address. Did I say that out loud? I apologize, master. While you are a meat bag, I suppose I should not call you such. It's just that you all have these twisty parts, master. And all that water. How the constant slothing doesn't drive you mad, I have, I have no idea. Statement. How do you understand the travail of my now do you now do you understand the travail of my existence, Master? Surely it does not compare to your existence, but still. I survived somehow as well. It is it is our lot in life, I suppose, Master. Shall we find something to kill to cheer to cheer ourselves up? That's frustrating because I know what this is because of the meat bag line. I know what this is. And Admiral Kusanagi says he knows what it is. Uh, okay, who in chat knows what it is? I, I oh, that meat bag thing. For this one. I know I probably will. I've had a long day, but I, I know I probably will. Okay, who knows what that know, one is? No, know what meat bag is from? I, I know what Kusanagi. that's from. Yeah, he might be holding back. Starts, Starts with, with Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> Starts with Star Wars. He's that long. <laughs> Star Wars The Old Republic or something? That's Night, it. Night, Night okay. of the Old Republic 1. Knights of the Old Republic. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I should have kicked myself <laughs> for that. 
Thank you, Admiral, for giving me a hint. I appreciate that. Okay, yeah. All right. So, How could uh, I ever miss that? How could yeah. I miss that? Okay. And while you're doing that, I'm going to put to sneak peek. Well, hang on a second. We've got folks. They all went up to general, so I'm assuming that they want to come people, on. I think people who are not in Star Citizen want to be down here. That's what I'm okay, that's what I'm saying. They all moved up to general, so okay. I'll start bringing people down for us if that's okay. Yep. Hey, Farrell. Hey, Dark Knight. Hey, everybody. That's all I just got to think. Hey, everybody, because I missed everyone. <laughs> right. <laughs> miss anyone. What's Hi. up? There you go. What's greetings, up? everybody. One universal hey. hello. Yeah. Greetings, greetings. All right, all right. Happy to have you all guys right. with us tonight. Thank you. So we have hey. Alan Kusanagi, Black Chaos, Dark Knight, Fist to Face, Go Map ATL, Hodo, Jade, Pop and Face, and Spitfire, Phoenix, XIV, 14. How are Party. you all doing? I'm great. I'm pretty good. Just got out of uh, mm. James Bond tonight. That was a, a long, long movie, but very good. Oh, the new one? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. I think it's it's very very good. Yeah. Don't say anything then. We... I won't say anything. <laughs> hey, Dark was... Knight. Mm -hmm. It's on my Plex server, by the way. Oh, don't okay. Say watch that on the air. You don't want yeah, people really. coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go map. You know what's happening this week. <laughs> <laughs> God, we're gonna get kicked off. Twitch I mean, I'm on the day. PTO server right now, flying an ion. What are y'all talking yeah, about? <laughs> anyway, this we As you were saying. sneak peek on um on the stream. Yeah, it yeah. says who turned the temperature hotter? Now I guess that's another um homestead kind of thing going on right there. But no, what, that looks like one of those uh go ahead. Yeah. It's a what? It's, it's one of the outlaw space stations. Yeah. No, oh, outlaw okay. space station. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, R and R. It's an outlaw link in Twitch chat. Yeah, do you guys think that because they've been showing us all this outlaw stuff that Pyro might be closer than people anticipate? Well, Maybe? they kind of said, actually they blatantly said, kinda, that they are aiming to introduce the first iteration of server meshing with Pyro next year. Mm. Like quarter yeah. one, quarter two, so yeah. Quarter, there, there, quarter there, three or four. And right, and I, you know, I looked at the whole thing, and we'll and we'll talk about the server meshing piece that did this week. I mean, I saw all that. I saw the dates, which was interesting because you know they usually stay away from dates. Yeah, that's what I was. But it, but it did show that. some confidence, evidently, by them giving us dates. But they are notorious for when they show us stuff in sneak peeks that stuff isn't that far away. They don't show yeah, us stuff yeah. in sneak peeks and it's a year away. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah, it's, it's it's really like, spooking it's like me that out. Mining. That mining device that was like a few months. Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Six months is what I've seen, just by guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why I'm kind of just curious because we keep seeing these little glimpses of pyro yeah. from time to time. So I guess it's something for us to keep an eye on. And Griff, know? I want to throw something out there. I saw a photo. I don't know if it was posted on Spectrum or Reddit, but somebody had saw a newspaper clipping in game about something about a jump point. And oh, I that's, that's, been, there for that's a while. been in there for years. Uh, has that been in there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. I just didn't know I saw it recently. Problem. Cool. So any okay. Other, any other thoughts or move on? Let's move. We got a lot to do tonight. It looks all like right. space is going to be cold. That's all I know. I can't wait till you guys see the machinima tonight. <laughs> all right. So let me uh, adjust. Oh, look at that. Griffin Gaming uh, ASMR. But, uh, <laughs> you gotta put you to sleep. But it starts to this and developers plan a 1,000 person Manchester Mega Studio. Uh, I'll put the link in our in Twitch chat. But, uh, yeah, have, have you, everyone seen this? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's a, yeah. I think it's a good move for them because I think they're gonna try to consolidate some of their offices in the UK. Yeah, I wonder if that replaces the, um, Wormslow Studio. Yeah, it does. I believe it is. They're, yeah. re they're yeah. just moving the but, I mean, they're going to hire 300 people because I think they're at like 400 now. So they're going to 700 people by 23 and then even more beyond that. 
This is just one there? office, oh, too. Oh, you're talking about an article, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, this thinking, is just one yeah, of their have, four studios. They have, they have 800 just, just all together right now. Over 800. So that's 10 right. people in one place. And, and it's also... In one place. It's also interesting, too, because it kind of gives us a better glimpse of why Chris said he was going back to Manchester, remember? Mm -hmm. You know, they were leaving the States and going back over there. So I'm sure that oversight of some of this is part of that as well, you know? They say he was going back over to see the finishing touches on Stars or on Squadron 42. Right. Yep, absolutely. But I also bet he's got his hand in the development of how this joint is going to be set up because this is a big studio. You guys saw the picture of the facility. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Um, Let me see if I can find it. Is it in the fast card, tell them, the, tell them what Zylo told you too. Yep. Okay, so Zylo was on Yacht Club last night, and he posted mm -hmm. um, this quote. I'm going to quote him um, word for word. Zylo, I think we've had so many pandemic hires in Austin that, we, that when we return to the office, we won't have enough seats for everyone. LOL, we're going everywhere. This is when um, Yacht Club was talking about this article also. Here's the news. Yeah, and we've talked about their hiring when we've gone on the CIG, the Cloud Imperium site, that there are a lot of positions that they're hiring for. So, I mean, it's a very positive thing for the company. I mean, we've seen CIG do the up and down with its employees. They get folks, they, you know, folks leave, they downsize, they come back. But the fact that they're doing this much growth um, is promising um, in the sense of the studio. So I think it's very cool. To call it downsizing wouldn't be fair because that would be, you know, they're cutting back to the cost, but... Yeah, Honestly, I shouldn't use just, the word downsizing. What's the what's the term when they let people go because they don't need them anymore? What's a better term for that? I think it's more of attrition. Firing. Just just you just kind of yeah, yeah, you just kind of go through people. And yeah. That's normal in most businesses mm -hmm. of this nature. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah, downsizing's mm -hmm. not the right word. Yeah. You know, um, this is just an off an offhand thing, but I hate when there's like a magnify icon you don't see it on, on the screen, and you click it. And it's actually a smaller image. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's cool. Yeah, Kudos so, yeah, to they, CIG for their move. That's great. So how how big do you think they're going to be, like, all together? Like, they have over, eight, over 800 now. What side do you think they're going to be? You what know, it's, it's, it's too hard to say. I mean, you know, part of Chris's strategy with having the studios global was so that there was continuous work on the project. But there's going to be a point where you don't know if that's still going to be necessary, you know, for them to operate multiple studios globally. And, you know, well, they may consolidate down at some point into, some, you know, maybe two facilities, maybe one in the UK, one in, in, um, in the US uh, or in Germany. Whether they need to have five or six. I mean, we know the one in Toronto is there, so that's going to be there. I'm just curious if they're going to continue that because that's a lot of money. Um, right. <laughs> running five facilities or six facilities is six, a lot yeah. of money. If they can get them under one umbrella somewhere, or at least a few of them in one umbrella, it probably will save them some money. Well, we got to remember. We, well, so we've got to remember that he's Squadron 42 Chapter 1 is all we're getting. This time, he's planning on doing a lot of this. This is going to be his next wing commander, you know, Magnus Opus. Yeah, this true. is a three part. True, but the question is, I'm series. saying, I'm saying that because of Star Citizen and Squadron 42, the need to operate global studios may not be there once we're just focused, you know, more on Squadron 42 and Star Citizen. I'm, I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from it. I'm just saying I'm curious to see whether or not he will still operate so many studios versus consolidating a few of them into maybe two countries or three countries instead of the way he has it right now. I have a feeling he's going to keep it large because I don't think Star Citizen or Squadron 42 is going to be the end for him. I have a feeling oh, he's yeah. going to try to go into more, more mocap story-driven games um, because I, I think he missed it. Like he just missed being that guy who was leading, leading the charge in gaming. Yeah, I mean, like Andy Circus opened up a new, uh, opened up a motion capture, a performance capture studio. Like, I mean, Chris Roberts could do that for gaming. And he sold, and he sold it too. <laughs> you know that, right? No, I didn't. Not only did he say that Peter Jackson just sold his. Yeah, Peter Jackson mm -hmm. sold his. I know that one. I didn't know Andy Circus mm -hmm. sold his also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what move that was for. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, Peter Jackson sold for one point six billion dollars. Yeah, a lot of man. money. A lot of money. Yeah. Okay. All right. So moving on, we have the server messing and persistence Q and A. Anyone get a chance to read this? 
A little did bit. everybody get a chance? Yeah, a little I'm bit. I did the a little little bit. Yeah. yeah. No. It's a big one. Yeah, yeah I, I guess as a synopsis of it, yeah, it's long, so we're not going to mm -hmm. go into all the depth depth on it. But we would recommend that you guys read it. It is a little bit more approachable uh, than even what was done with, even though the one that they did um, with Turbulent uh, for CitizenCon was pretty approachable. For some people, it was a lot, but this you can read and take your time with. And they do give us some indicators of their progress. The one thing I did like about it was that they went back and explained that meshing started way back in 2017. Um, and that each year they basically hit a landmark of all the things that needed to be in place before the meshing that we've been talking about finally can come into fruition. Um, so it looked, just so you can see the history of each year, those things that we didn't think very much of like OCS and mm -hmm. SOCS, they, they talk about how integral those things were to building to where we need to get um, for um, the meshing. And also they talk about the sharding and they explain that the ultimate goal is for us to be under one shard, but it will take time. So a lot of people have been spooked out about the multiple shards and, you know, whether or not you log in in your country, blah, 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 blah. But they are working toward yeah. having it where ultimately there will be one global shard in time. So Riff, if I can throw this in, sure, um, sure. in addition to that, um, oh, real quick, when, Black Knight, when people Dark Knight, before mm -hmm. you do that, I want to say Big Black Gaming, thank you for the 2400 bit. Oh, and more thank you. you for the subscription yes. with Prime. All right. Thank you. All. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. you. Um, what I was going to throw in is that um, when developers talk about something and they make it public, there's a lot of the times they've been working on this for a very long time. Yeah. If not, you know, a, a lot of this has been already back-ended and tested and now kind of coming forward to public. But they've been working on this for a while and bits and pieces have probably already been thrown into code. We just don't know until they actually say, here it is. <laughs> you know? Have you guys, yeah, let me ask everybody fun. a question. Have you guys noticed performance differences in 315? Big time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Big time. What performance differences do you see specifically? I got, I got 48 frames per second at Orison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting oh. frame rates. Graphical clarity is there. Um, yeah, I used yeah, to yeah. get I used to get that hitching whenever I would go into quantum, where it would kind of like jump, jump a yeah. little bit. Right. Yeah, and yeah. now when I do it, it's totally smooth. I don't. Get I still that get at that all. at Area 18. You but do? I have a little bit. Oh, you know what? I heard, no, I heard that Area 18 from a good source. Area 18 has a desync issue, and it's the only ah. place where it's supposedly bad at. Ah. But um, I'm glad that everybody is. It wasn't just me hallucinating. Yeah because Colossal and I were talking about that we had seen mm -hmm. some performance differences. So in the back end, they are, as you mentioned, DK, they've been doing work, especially with the, the stuff that they integrated today, which we'll talk about in a little bit because they added something new to the game today, which is, well, to the PTU they did. So yeah. uh, do you want to talk about PTU now or do you want to talk about IAE? No, no, no. Hey, fast card. Y'all, you just keep skipping over me, man. That was going to be the second topic. You didn't call on me. Ahead, First go. of all, I'm going to step in. back in, because man. you didn't say that. Oh, you didn't call on in. anybody. I'm jumping in. Yeah. Jumping in. Uh, First of all, um, all right, they're they're growing, right? So I'm curious as how how does that compare to other AAA gaming studios and gaming companies, right? Because this may be big for Star Citizen or for CIG, but are they just growing to the size of you know a normal triple a gaming studio or is this something special something different i don't know does anybody else know they're they're, they're getting close to normal i'll say triple a like i'm comparing it to blizzard and ccp being on the smaller end of this like blizzard at one time at their peak had what three thousand employees yeah, i wouldn't call blizzard normal dog blizzard is like big they've been yeah, around for huge. a while but you have to remember, CIG, what they're looking at is close to what Blizzard was doing more than just an online game. Right. So just to force perspective, they're, 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 they're growing up. It's not like they're, you know what I'm saying, uh, breaking new ground out, you know, in, in the gaming industry by, by consolidating and make, making this move. This is something new and great for them. I'm just curious. Uh, how it compares to get to yeah. give you a number bethesda has about 420 to 450 employees okay um blizzard who you guys mentioned a few seconds ago i think blizzard had over 7,000 globally at one point 
Um, so for them to be in excessive, like right, like Ascard said, um, <clears throat> um, Zylo had told us that they were a little over 800 back when we had the last bar citizen. So, and I know that they had at least three to 400, I think, new positions available. So no, even if they were 1,000, the, was it more than that? Citizen, if I'm not mistaken, the August, yeah. August bar citizen. Uh, so we got no, 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 no. It was the one when he said that he sent out the invitations to all the CIG employees. Oh, you're that right. Was for you're the right. One that we so that was like right. You're right. Right. So, so, but my point is, is that even if it's over 1,000, it's still, a, you know, it's a decent number. But to your point, GoMab, I don't know if there's anything extraordinary other than the fact that they're able to do it. If I'm not mistaken, CIG did a profit, made a profit last year. Usually they're just about breaking even or right below it or whatever. But I think they made a profit of 14 million. Yeah, they um, had like and it may be, million in crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. Oh, by and the way, be, I want to thank 97, 97 not nine for the subscription, seven months. Thank, thank you for the you. subscription. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, 97.9. We'll, 97 <laughs> that's the, that's the loop radio here in Chicago, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you, had a, okay. you, you had another thing, um, go map. Uh, all right. I'll, we can go, go ahead and move forward to the next topic. Now, that was the main thing I wanted to bring up mm -hmm. is the comparison to the other ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. All right, so next up we have, uh, do you want to do the IAE or you yeah, want to let's do, do No, 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 let's do 315 because IAE is coming up still. So let's, let's do 315 first, if that's okay. Okay, all right. Um, so, okay, so we got the IAE promo. So I'm going to play that real quick. It's only a minute and, minute and a half, so hold on. We're going to play it real quick. suffered a catastrophic injury, but you're okay now. Now don't rush anything, but you're free to go when you feel comfortable. I just gotta say, you dropped a bomb on me. How you doing, Okay. Uh, All right. So no, yeah, that was no three fifteen. No, just Orlando, but I like yours better, fast court. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Thank you. So uh, yeah, that was the three fifteen promo. Um, deadly consequences, and uh, you know, <laughs> that's true words that haven't been spoken in a while. In that. So has, that, has everyone had a chance to go into 315 and in the live, not PU, in, in the live? Oh, yeah. And, uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. And, 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 realize how, and realize how broke you were after you got in. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Griff, yeah. I got in for about five minutes and then they dropped the PTU. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I finally, yeah. I finally got to see 315. Yeah. So what did you think of Um, It's very cool. I mean, I, I kind of. I think I like it a little bit better than I thought I was going to because uh, there was a lot of stuff in Twitch streams I was like, oh, I'm going to hate this patch. But I haven't died yet. You know, we did do a bunker mission. Emphasis um, on yet. A few of them. So we I didn't die. Did, uh, I had a I had to fix the uh, our medic who was drunk at the time. So that was, he was dead and I had to, I had to heal him. <laughs> so, so, uh, 
it was an interesting time, but uh, and and I saw the bombs drop too, so it was just really cool. And I was actually inside looking at the bombs, and as the the bomb bay was open, I I could kind of see the explosion like through the bomb bay outside. It's pretty so cool, it was really right? Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I'm getting everything all at once, like right in the past, you know, twelve hours or so ago. I'm probably maybe close to twenty four now. Good job. Uh, so man. it was pretty pretty cool, and I tried the four hundred I out for the first time, so that was fun. Hmm. Stability has been really good. Stability has been very good. I jumped in to 315 live and played for about three or four hours and did not have any issues. With yeah, we didn't have any. We didn't have any 30ks. But what I did have an issue with the picking up like the armor from the yes. the missions. Like I couldn't get anyone's stuff. And like, what well, I, I will say that the people. So my org mates were like picking stuff up and then, then they would lose a gun. Like, oh, I just, I'm missing my gun now or, or this would fall off of them. And so I just stayed away from that stuff. And, you know, I, 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 I picked up a rifle because I'm like, oh, I found, I'll, I'll try, I'll just pick up a rifle and then keep mine, even though I had like a hundred rounds in it. And then, uh, I tried to switch my guns over and then it dropped the gun. And then my, my personal gun got locked in the out position. So I couldn't put it away. And every time I put it, try to put it away, it would just come right back out. So I had to log out of the game and then come back in, uh, you know, in my hab, uh, just to, so my gun would work right. So mm -hmm. at least for the moment, maybe I know there's a PTU patch out right now. Maybe I'm just, I'm just going to hold off on picking anything up because everything that I buy from a store seems to work fine. And I just don't trust it right now for that stuff. Yeah, there's a bunch of fixes in this next patch. I'm not sure if that one was in it, but there were several things that I heard people complaining about that are in 3.51. So yeah, you'll, hopefully you won't have to wait long. Yeah, I'm always the one who ignores the PTU and just wait for lie. I don't want to lie. I went to, I installed it yesterday. I had, it took me 30 seconds to figure out I can't use F1 to um, change my gear anymore. I have to use the I button, the I key now. And after I figured that, that out, I got sidetracked. And I stick up with like I idle for like 15 30 minutes and then the game crashed and I had now I had went back in which is fine because that they, new patch today so hopefully if whatever maybe crashed yesterday won't be there today. So you want to well, it's not a new patch in live, it's not a new patch in live yet. It was a PTU patch. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. right, yep, right, yep, right. So yep. it just came out today. You. Yeah, it just came out today. Did you, how many of you guys got a chance to check out the PTU with 3.51? I'm in it right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, I'm in it right now. I'm right. Wow. Loading out uh go go map the Aries to test out. So yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's what's new. They dropped the Aries, both the Ion, the Inferno, and the Redeemer yeah. are all in the game. Uh that and quick. Griff. The yeah. clouds. I know. Clouds yeah. on microtech. Yeah. Oh take, my take a look at the screenshot I dropped in uh Wow. And so it, it, it cloud is cloud is in now. Do you have like? Did you have the Buster Sword like from Final Fantasy Seven? No, I'm I'm that's a bad one. <laughs> but uh, value at the cloud. Yeah, I'm looking forward to to seeing them. Uh, yeah, they're only oh, they're at beautiful. Microtech, though. They're only at Microtech though. They have yeah, they're, they're, they're out, but they're there. Mm. That's my home. Yeah, they're that's my home. Yeah, they're they're gorgeous. They really are, and they're and they're going to improve on them even beyond where they are now. So. And the performance isn't all that bad either. Um, yes, I, I've actually I, just asking how the frames with the cloud. Yeah, I actually increased the clouds, the volumetric clouds. That is the dif difference, but I'm on a kind of beast of a computer, so mm -hmm. I'm right. an outlier. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't notice anything substantial with it. I, I went and flew through some just to see, you know, how it would be, and it was smooth as silk for me. So. Oh, so we did, so I, we did I, get a, I, a real question. It, I think it's related to the trailer, but I say that white belt in the back of the Inferno gun, ugly, right? Anyone notice that? I haven't what? seen the Ares or the Inferno yet, so I'm waiting to see it. Maybe one of the, yeah. or somebody else who's seen it knows what they're talking about. The white you know, what? The white barrel. Uh, I'll copy and paste it. But the white barrel and then on on the back of the inferno gun, ugly, right? No, I didn't see any. The, the ship oh, is beautiful. Yeah. Both, both of the Aries are absolutely stunning to not only look at, but to also fly and to shoot things with. 
It's they hard are. to not like this. Uh, Jade, who said that we'll see if <clears throat> gets rid of one of his ships? Remember that comment? Oh, I'm going to get rid of one of them once they Actually, come out. Actually, I've melted both of them. That's why uh, I'm flying Jades. And so I'm picking which one that I will God. actually buy. <laughs> You're going to get them both back. Just, You're going to get them just, both. Just so we're clear, I don't own either one of those ships. But because uh, it, if you know somebody who's a you know tester in a certain group, they have access. Uh, well, he's gonna he's gonna end up buying them back. Watch any money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but see, that, that's that's the thing about like sometimes when we theory craft, we we don't know yet, and, and you know we don't know what we don't know. And then now they've come in and and they've exceeded my expectations. I didn't think they were gonna have. Um, you know, the acceleration or the turning rate. Oh, they fly like a dream. Oh, oh man. Could you repeat am, that, please? Could you hey, repeat look, that, I am please? so happy. Why? Why? Everything Why? that I said, <laughs> everything that I said, I'm glad that they, they, they listened. Oh, is that what happened? Oh, they listened. Yeah. 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 They listened. Yeah. Now, granted, listen, I did hear I said, that do not nerf. John Crew, right? Do not nerf this ship's flying ability as a small will, crusader though. ship. You do look, man, man, look. I, I I'm, I'm over here skipping off asteroids like I'm singing in the rain. And uh oh, yeah. hey, look, hey, look. Paseo hey, says, yeah. Paseo Paseo says Paseo Paseo acceleration Paseo. is a bug. So yes, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna reduce it a little bit. It's a little uh, bit too, you know, too aggressive on the acceleration. <laughs> which oh, is I love okay. it. No, it's perfect. It's, Don't touch it's balanced. It. <laughs> they need to move that bug to but the Mercury move Star out. Since it's like yeah. a data runner, move, move right. that acceleration bug to that. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Not hey, 400. I need some love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. We make That's the 400. Funny. Make everything else faster. Don't make this one slower. <laughs> oh, Look, God. stop nerfing stuff. You know what I'm saying? So map, everything's going to end up slowly creeping up to 2,000 mm. meters a second, which is <laughs> the or later. limit. Sooner or later. <laughs> That's hilarious. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, to, so, speaking of new ships. Uh, seven days to IAE. Oh, wait what a minute. Well, can, I say, can I say one more thing before we go? Go ahead. Um, did any of you all get to see the Redeemer? I, uh, I had told yeah. people that people were going to mm -hmm. hate the fact that they got rid of it, the people who did, but I heard that everybody's loving it, that, that have been flying it. And I heard, yeah, I heard it's scary. It. Is it pretty I'm gonna cool? I'm going to get on Jade's. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, a beast. It's, it's a beast. It, it's cool. I, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not for me. Like I can. Right. I can admit that it's cool for mm -hmm. the people that like that that style. Right. Right. But it's right. not for me. Okay. Yeah. I, Same I, here. I spawned, I spawned one, and I love. <coughs> yeah, there was a guy. Uh, we were all in, in voice, um, and he came in the ship, and he's like, "I've been waiting for this ship for seven years. I was like, <laughs> they had that content, mm -hmm. and that, that's when I really got it. Right. Mm -hmm. because, like I could hear the emotion in his voice. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's cool. That's good to hear. Could it be like the BMM once the band of Oh, don't yeah. start yeah. with that BMM. Uh, hey, so I got you, you <laughs> Sorry, I know. It's it's, it's the, been a long it's, time. The, Redeemer is a fantastic. It's a nice ship. Mm -hmm. it, I, it's just not for me. It's going to probably yeah. sit in my in my my buy bag. Um, oh, when I when I saw it, I didn't see myself. When I flew it and, you know, I didn't see myself ever wanting to jump into it unless there was like a bunch of people that I was playing with. And there's like a hundred percent chance that one of them have that mm -hmm. ship already, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's a good ship. It's going to be a fantastic gunship. It's going to be a, uh, a hammerhead killer. Um, flat irons open and close with your thrust. Oh, it's beautiful. The, the oh, flat really? irons work fantastic. Good. Yeah. That's okay. good. That's good. That's good to give it functionality. But there's no rock. Shields. Wow. It has three size three shields, right? I think it's two. Two size three. Okay. Well, that's still I good, mean, the though. size three are huge. And the guns on that thing, it's got size fives mm -hmm. on it, right? But does it hold I, a rock? I know it doesn't go from Crusader to Microtech. Yeah. But, oh, I mean, yeah. The quantum. The quantum is is like eleven hundred quantum fuel. Okay. It's like oh, it's wow. lower. It's lower than a freaking uh, Vanguard or a Cutlass. Okay. It's ridiculous. Um, How big is the ship compared to a Vanguard or Cutlass? About the same size. It's about the same size. Okay. Oh, it's big. No, it's a big. Ship. It's big. It's bigger. It's, it's bigger. bigger. It's way Vanguard. bigger than a Vanguard. It's way bigger. It's, it's, about, it's about the size of a Freelancer. Yeah, it only has the third third Vanguard. The thing is, though, the Vanguard is explicitly stated as a long range heavy fighter. Right. Yeah. Well, the Redeemer doesn't have right. range. Right. Now, exactly. Remind me the Aries 
the Ares has limited fuel too. Is right. that yes. like lighter medium tank mm -hmm. on that? Uh, the current size it matches uh, medium, the Redeemer. Right? It's got eleven yeah, hundred yeah. quantum fuel, um, mm -hmm. although it's listed as having medium, which would put it the same as the Freelancer and the Cutlets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a tank um, ship. Well, I'm glad people are happy with it because most of, a lot of people I heard today were really happy with it. So that's good news. Okay. Yeah, I'm not getting one, but I'm going. I'm happy, I'm happy for people who, who do have one. Make me look forward. Yeah. To, make, looking yeah. forward to the BMM even more when it comes out. Stop bringing up that BMM. <laughs> <laughs> Stop bringing up Origin. <laughs> I mean, again, it comes down to the, the size of the population. You, you want to put a, a, a group together. You either have enough people to man, you know, something like a say a Cutlass Black, two people. Or you have enough people for a redeemer, or you got enough people for a hammerhead or above. Mm -hmm. So a Valkyrie. Yeah, exactly. you know, Valkyrie. Valkyrie yeah. has a lot of people, especially yeah. with those door gunners, and to actually all the people it carries, crazy. Okay, cool. All uh, right, we've got next, bud. All right, uh, we we got another real question from Black Intellect. How has the new inventory chain gameplay so far, in your opinion, and how will it? Or how will it change going forward from Black Intellect? So how will the new inventory um, change gameplay in, in your play, in, in in your opinion? Is it good? Bad? You like it? Love it! I absolutely love it. Um, yep. It's forcing people to think a little more on what they need to bring and how they need it. Like, do they need everything? Are they going to risk everything? Um, bunker missions for a lot of people is no longer just run in, die, repeat, run in, die, repeat. Yep. I agree with you, Hodo. I think it turned out great with the you know, people have to think like I spent an hour and a half putting together a backpack for every ship so that I have everything that I need on that one ship and a spare backpack full of stuff just in case, just in case I need to go back to home and pick something up. It, it, it makes you rethink the game. I have to ask. Go ahead, Jay. Oh yeah, I was gonna say it absolutely makes you rethink the game and the missions that you're going to take. Um, maybe you don't go out and try to uh, solo that investigation mission now, because the, you know plenty of those wrecks now have uh, NPC hostiles. So you maybe you know you f you find one of your friends and you go out together. Things like that that we may have fallen into certain habits over the years. Those are gonna be changed, I think. Yeah, backspace is not the solution to all problems in this game anymore. Not yeah. anymore. So I have nope. a question for Gomad. Have you been implementing your make money? Um... Oh, it's not about, well, it, it is partly, partly making money, but it's also partly getting guns and armor. And you I know I have. I've got about 12 sets of armor already and about 13 guns. I'm, I'm not buying dead bodies any outside armor. Your ship. They, no, they're floating over our corp somewhere. I, yeah. I am not buying any armor or any guns unless I absolutely have to. I will be taking them off of bodies. And 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 storing them I, like just like you, I have a suit of armor and a and at least a gun or two and ammo, a med pen, a multi tool with a tractor beam in every ship. Get this, go map. The first time I spawned in the three fifteen and went to grab uh, claim my ship, I went to the hangar and there was a dead body on the ground with all subscriber flare on there. You better believe I looted him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great video. I'm going to put yeah, a right. link in chat uh, for, um, and it was in relation to what DK said. It, this is 15 tips for playing Star Citizen, and one of them is the thing that you mentioned, DK, which was that you make backpacks that are designed for different things. So you can have a medical backpack, a mining backpack, whatever, and then all you have to do is just grab that and go. Go so back. I'm going I'm to drop that in. Yeah, there go back. So I'm going to drop it in the link, and you guys can check it out. It's a pretty cool video watching a streamer last night and uh he, there's this new streamer and uh he's been playing the game for like maybe a week and uh or something like that and he goes to prison and he's chatting with these other people and the guy's like oh well you know we could try to escape and he doesn't tell them we actually need they they, they needed uh you know uh, someone to pick them up but he, he's like trying to show them okay so we go out here and then he got like through the the, the fan the grate got to the, the first section and he's like okay i think we go through that 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 place down that cave entrance over there, and then they get through. There. He's like, now where? He's like, yeah, I have no idea. That's as far as I can get. 
And it, the guy was like stuck within like five minutes, and they he just like rage quit. So it was just kind of uh, it was kind of amusing to me actually. Can I uh, hop in? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead hey, right. Yeah. So I wanted to bring something from a large org perspective. So Skunkworks is now like the largest, fastest, not largest, fastest growing org um, in Star Citizen. We hit 800 people um, in Skunkworks now. Nice. And so we have like an academy, which um, me and another individual are running as commandant and vice commandant. And we have like fighter command, fleet command, etc. cetera. And um, this patch has made us like we have an actual academy and where we like classes and we teach people um because like on i i mean i hate to say this but the game doesn't do a good job of teaching you how to play it um and how to take all of it especially with 315 how to take everything into consideration but i especially with 315 one dropping today and and seeing the redeemer and the starfighters and the clouds over Microtech, which were fantastic. 315 is a powerhouse. Mm. It is it is a powerhouse of a patch. I'm really excited. I haven't been this excited since 3.0 dropped. Um, so this is this is really, really good. It's forcing people to slow down their gameplay, to be more methodical, to be, you know, more mission-oriented, more thought-oriented, more role-oriented. You know, if you go out with a squad somebody's going to be the medic somebody's like you know your heavy gunner carrying all that kind of good stuff so i think this this is just fantastic so i'm having a good time but i always am so you know hey whatever cool cool glad to hear that right it's been right. fun so next topic is seven days to iae Join us for the Inter Intergalactic Ex Aerospace Expo 2951, the biggest ship show in the verse, in honor of the Galaxy's premier aerospace event returning to Microtech, Star Citizen will be, will be free to play from November 19th to December 1st. Get in the game and head to the Expo for all this and more. So, um, one of the, some of the um, headlines or, or features will be, test over 100 ships spaces for free, New vehicle announcement, special edition vehicle paints and in game item. And, and, and those are the three. So see you there. So, uh, yeah, you got, you know, eight days, seven days, depending on how, where you are in the world. So the have IAE. any of you all, I'm sorry, have any of you all done any adjusting yet for IAE or are you waiting? You're not doing anything right now. Oh, you already know I've done some adjusting. <laughs> I've done some adjusting yeah, too. Haven't, yeah, I it haven't even mean. logged in yet, so I'm waiting to log in, and I'm gonna set my 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 home to to New Babbage. Mine is already oh, uh, New Babbage, but uh, no, I, just, just in my fleet, like I use um, Star Jump. They're making a new uh, CCU chain um, on their website, but um, I think it was GoMap. He posted the one that was already existing, so I've been using that. And I could have saved so much money in the past, but. I'm, I'm glad I found it now. <laughs> You're a good fundraiser yeah. there, uh, Fast Cart. They they appreciate you. <laughs> Just giving okay. straight cash. Uh, yeah, I I melted a bunch of my ships, you know, including the Redeemer and both of the Ares, um, the 400i and a few other ones, to go ahead and get the Explorer pack. Uh, so now I have the you know the Carrick, the 600 and whatnot. But what's cool is I, there's a bunch of ships in that pack that I'm are just going to be upgrade fodder, right? Then I'm going to be using, hopefully, in order to secure um, whatever ships go on a good sale uh, in an IAE. So hopefully I'll be able to hop on some good CCU chains. Yeah, I got the, um, the $600 um, entrepreneur pack, but you know, I, I've been wanting to consolidate my fleet instead of make, make it bigger. So that just added two or three ships that, I, that I'm never going to use and it, it, it didn't have a purpose for as a uh, LTI token. So I'm going to just melt that and get the get an MSR. I might get a Warden and I'll probably get a, um, a whole B from my, from my buyback. Congrats on the MSR, Fast Cart. Great yep, ship. Thank you. Great Fantastic ship. ship. 
Oh, I and I, it, it, I I may get a, a a Phoenix, even though it's 350. But I mean, if I get to the Phoenix, oh. that'd be the first that'd be the first ship to go in case something else better comes along. <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw that the um, A2, the well, the all of the Crusader ships are back up for sale, mm -hmm. and um, they um, also put out. I think there's maybe one or two new skins that they've included as well. There's three now. Um, yeah. Is it three? Yeah. And then they also, I think they're giving it for the ten years. The AE isn't that for the insurance? And did I see that correctly? They're, I yeah, think, at this sale right. now. They're giving it with the IAE um, insurance for the 10 years. So for those of you who are interested, I think that they did do the um, the A2 is $25 less if you do it with war bond cash. Otherwise, it increased. 75, yeah. 75? Yeah. Uh, is $75 cheaper? No, it was uh, $700 originally, and I think they're doing it for six seventy five now. Oh, if you do okay. More I'm about like like now from, compared to um not not, not the uh, concept price, but now compared to okay. yeah y yeah. So it's it's twenty five bucks cheaper if you go war bond, but I think it's fifty. How much is it if you're credit? No, no. Right now the regular one is seven fifty, and the uh, A two I A E war bond is six seventy five. That, that's what, that's what I was time. that that's that's what I was saying. The war bond is six seventy five. It's twenty. When it came out the first time, it was seven hundred dollars. Okay, that's yeah. what I'm saying. They knocked off twenty five bucks if you go war bond, but it went up with credit. Yeah. So just so you'll know, the prices. You know, we've been talking about this price creep thing that's been happening with some of the ships, and I'm, I am curious to see if IAE will see other ships that will increase in price this year. You know why they're selling it now is because just for that, because as soon as IAE hits, all these new ships that no one even knows about or officially knows about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so like hey you just bought a six seven hundred dollar ship for, you know and then oh by the way here's another seven hundred dollar ship <laughs> and then come back in two more days we'll give you a six hundred dollar ship <laughs> so i some, think we're only going to get one announcement yeah Instead somebody of, somebody noted that when ci does cig does this at iae there's always something high end and low end that they actually yeah, that was cater me. was it you jade okay yeah. Yeah, that they try to cater on both ends of the spectrum. So, mm -hmm. Star Trek is saying that we're going to get a new ship on an anvil day and a new ship on a mixed yep. day because they, they, they're the opening and new day. Of, of mm -hmm. so, I think mm -hmm. there's also an Argo. Well, there is an Argo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. There's the Argo, yeah. uh, and then there's the the Misk. We only we we know the refinery ship is coming out. They 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 kind of showed that you know a month ago in that blurry Im image that we've talked about here before. And then, and then of, of course, the uh, the CCU token on the first day for Anvil, uh, which apparently is going to be some vehicle. So um, there's I at least that three ships. Token. Well, that's like some eighty-five bucks or whatever it's going to be. But I mean, I'm going to buy it because I want to buy it. I'm not going to CCU up, use it to CCU. I think the raft will probably be cheaper. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. I'm very confused with the, the raft because I've seen. I think it's going to be a similar size to the Argo Mole, so it's going to be bigger than I think people think, mm. and I don't really know the purpose of it. Yeah, I'm mixed up. I've heard so many versions of what the raft could be. I've just kind of at this point said, okay, I'll just wait to see what it comes right. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. So I say it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Argo cargo carrier. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna have one. It's not gonna have any cargo capacity. It's just gonna carry Argo Car cargo. Argo mini so carrier. Okay, it's an Argo <laughs> carrier. Okay, Argo carrier. That's it. Okay, fair. It's enough. gonna be the most popular ship in the game. I'm calling it now for the winner <laughs> of the ship showdown of 2022. Does oh it come with God. the? Uh, He's always gonna get with money. That's funny. Don't start that already. I'm still. Sure I'm about starting it. Hey. <laughs> Anvil Pisces for all those who hated the Argo winning Anvil Pisces. Pisces. Hey, I love my little Pisces, Pisces man. I love the Pisces. Yeah, that's the runabout. Hey, I'm trying. I'm trying to kick mine out as a as a 890 jump mission ship, right? So it's strong <laughs> enough to kill the uh, the two Cuddy Blacks, right? And I've done it. I've done the mission with it a couple times when I've had it fully kitted out on the PTU. Mm -hmm. Strong enough to kill the Cuddy Blacks. And then I just I just hot drop into the hangar and come out guns a blazing. It's awesome, man. It's fantastic <laughs> gameplay. I'm gonna make a video of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but uh, do you think you'll be like stripping 
uh, ships for their weapons and stuff? Because, you know, it's expensive to upgrade your character with, you know, store-bought stuff. Do you think, would you rather just start stripping other ships that you come across for, you know, uh, uh, power plants and shield emitters and all this other crap? Um, well, here's what I'll do. I will, I will do cargo runs. I will run, you know, 890 missions on, like, with my, um, right now I can do it in my 315 or 325, right? And I can still land in the cargo bay and whatnot. Um, I, I, I can, I'm going to do as many things as I possibly can without upgrading until I get my first million. And then I will pick a, a ship. All right, this is the pri first priority ship that I will upgrade fully. I'm not going to spread the love around. I want to focus on each ship to get them up to date and then get the money back up. Right. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm doing. Yeah, skunks is um, any of our uh, battle group ships that aren't on mission are assigned to um, basically money making to get out there and get ERTs going and get and get people on board and and get people making money. I like the way that works, there, Rain. Cool. Yeah. Skunks. Definitely All right. Good. So uh, before uh, we get to the ISC for today, we have a couple of more real questions they're going to um, knock out before we do that. So um, 97.9, uh, what do you f want to see CIG add to the next patch cycle? What do you want to see CIG add to the next patch, patch cycle? For me, I want them to continue to work on their combat improvements for the ships, continue oh, wow. balancing. I mean, things are kind of at a bland point. I see where they're trying to go, but they really need to start finishing it. That makes sense because there's so many new combat ships coming into into the game right now. You know, you've got additions of the Ares and the Redeemer, which are primarily combat ships. We saw the ISC, which we're going to see shortly. That's you know that's concentrating on combat. There is there's some focus there. And uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll start seeing a little bit more of what's going to happen in that arena as we go forward. I'm well, sure we'll just see... go ahead, Ray. I'm sure we'll see, um, you know, weapon typing, weapon 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 archetyping, um, you know, and not just cannons R4 ship. It'll be mm -hmm. anti anti fighter cannon, anti ship cannon. Uh, I'm also sh certain that we'll see. Um, you know, the, the balancing of the shields. So, like, you know, do you want a shield that's got a lot of health but low regen, um, or a shield that's good on your thermal draw, or a shield that's really good on high regen but low health? You know, so that, like they said, you have to you have to make decisions. Um, and, and I applaud them for trying to fight the, the beast that is meta. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're, having worked on a multiplayer game, uh, meta is... is Really hard to fight against, so yeah, you know. We'll, we'll, I, we'll, I, yeah. we'll, we'll cover that more um, okay. after the ISC. But okay. uh, next question is from Big Black Gaming: What is the strategic advantage to making New Babbage home? I figured Orson and Captain Crows would make it a better home. Ship upgrades. It depends I, on your play style. If you're doing mm -hmm. a lot of uh, you know ship bounty hunting type stuff, then absolutely. Um, it also depends on, do you have a small ship to get out of the atmosphere? Like a small, yep. fast, do you have like a racing ship or maybe an 85X or you know, right now mm. the, the Ares <laughs> Inferno, right? Uh, or any of the Ares Starfighters. But yeah, like if you can get out of Atmo quick and, you know, if you're primarily upgrading your ship for, um, you know, ship-based combat, absolutely. And it, if, yeah. But if you're doing something else, maybe not. I said proximity also to PO and Grim Hex makes a big difference. And there's a lot of things to do around the Crusader area that also make it pretty appealing next to Hurston. I, uh, sorry. No, go ahead, Ray. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking too much. No, no, go ahead. I'll, I'll get you after you. Okay. Um, I, I just I feel like I'm talking too much already. Um, no, you're fine. No, for me... Um, New Babbage number one got the new cloud deck, so you know rule of cool. But right, <laughs> I also um, I like my personal play style is I like the remoteness of New Babbage and Microtech because everybody is going to be all right, you know, out near Crusader and and Hurston, right? And 
with this latest patch, there are bunker missions on every single planet and moon in the game now. And so for me, I'm just going to be chilling out at, at Microtech doing my thing and, and doing missions and making money and having a good time. And, you know, if I need to go somewhere, I have a Connie. It can go from one side of the system back again in five minutes. I don't care. So, yeah, I think it's just the remoteness. I was going to say for, for some people who um, <clears throat> were for their spawning points, some people are picking New Babbage um, because of the, uh, in, or in, in Horizon, because of the hospitals, so that they're able to be there. Um, where other locations, you're waking up up on the uh, space station in the clinics. Uh, the tier one beds are in those locations where you don't have that in the clinics is another thing too. Um, but I think for right now, you know, I know he's asking, is there some strategic thing? I think both Jade and Rain hit on it, you know, depending on what it is you want to do. Um, for some people, like they said, the weapon shop is why they're there. For other people, they don't want to be bothered with Orison because of the atmospheric climb. Um, other people just happen to like New Babbage because that's the place to go. Uh, for me, it's R Corp. One reason why is because I've always liked R Corp. A lot of people... Um, don't go there, which is great with me. All the armor sets and most of the weapons I get, personal weapons, are there as well. And last but not least, uh, my wife is there, Tessia Pacheco. So, yeah. Other than that, <laughs> I do want to. I told you. her to stop talking to you, Grim. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know this until last night, but I do want to let people know that it, you're it, wherever you picked to go. The 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 hovering space station that's around that planet shares the same. Correct. You know, inventory. So mm -hmm. if you have a, you know, don't think that you have to go all the way down to planet side. You could just go to, I guess it would be Alasar Port O to get yeah. your ship for, you know, um, um, that new the new place. Oh, what's it? Yeah, Orison. Orison. Orison yeah. yeah. And Admiral, just to your point, that thing I put in the video for the fifteen tips. One of the things they tell you also is that when you're within proximity of the station, even if you don't land, you can actually do your stuff, your inventory. So you yep. can get within the armistice area and do it there and not even land if you don't if you don't want to. If you want to, that's fine. But you're absolutely right. It does share the inventory from the planet up to the orbital station. So okay. there are a lot of good tips and a lot of changes, as, as Rain mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of changes in here with inventory. It's going to take a little bit for everybody to get used to. I can't tell you how many times I thought I had everything with me, took off, landed somewhere and realized I left stuff <laughs> It's the place where I was. Well, I, mean, I, I don't want. I don't want people. I don't want people to get used to it because. No, 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 no. It'll, I'm, it'll I'm, change I'm, still. No, right? Well, it's yeah. going to change. But when I say get used to it, I'm saying that for most of the people, as you mentioned, or I think Gomam said it earlier, people are used to just doing backspace, right, to end oh, things. Oh yeah, yeah. And I'm just saying it's going to take some time for people to adjust to, because like you said, this is significant changes. It's not just a couple of tweaks in the game. There's a lot that has changed. Even getting used to using the inventory, I've I've seen people hollering at the inventory just because they didn't know they could use the sort button or when they picked up something, it went to the bottom of the list or that the list doesn't show anything unless you use the filter. There's just these little things that the more you use it, the more you'll learn how to use yeah. it. So just yeah. be patient, but there's a lot of good stuff in there for the game. I, I, I feel, feel a lot more... Oh, go ahead. Right. Oh, I'm doing it again. Sorry, go ahead, Jay. No, it's a... Oh, okay, I'll go ahead. Hey. Um, but yeah, I see a lot more people deciding to live off of their ship as mm -hmm. well since you can store inventory on ships and mm -hmm. you can now consistently log out of your ship on a planet, <laughs> on a moon, in mm -hmm. space. So, you know, this this may also change the way a lot of people play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless our ship is a reliant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't talk about the reliant. Okay. Uh, it's far. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say I'm going to head out. I got work tomorrow. So oh, okay, okay. Thanks, thanks for You're dropping right. in, bro. Yeah. The yeah, I, I picked New Babbage because it's closest to the aesthetic to what I expect uh, Terra or Soul to be. And mm -hmm. I just like the looks of it when I like like hanging out there. Uh, Ellison w w would have been my second, but there's no way I'm going to spend all that time trying to get get true and out of atmosphere on Ellison. So New Babbage mm -hmm. for me. you got to be able to just sit back and watch the view fast card. That's all. Cruise control, relax. baby. Just cruise <laughs> control. Point yeah, up. Yeah. While I'm cruise, that, I, you know, I'll get I, you I something to drink. And, I, I can get up and make a sandwich. <laughs> I can shave. There you go. <laughs> or well, either that, or uh, you get like 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 Jade said, you got a plan, right? Hey, you know, <laughs> really, if you spawn at Orison, you only got to get out of atmosphere once. Mm -hmm. 
right once <laughs> and and that's and that's to get to po and now once you know for the people that spawn in ours and quick tip fly over to grim hex and set your regeneration there so that next time when you do die you don't you don't have to do that fly out of orison again you just have to do it once and then next time you spawn it'll be a grim hex and it's a space station it's a lot easier to get in and out of just a quick tip all your inventory is over at port Olazar. Which is I, right there, which yeah, is like I, a hop, skip, and a jump. Do you can, you know, it's, it's not far away from you at all. I, um, I, haven't, I haven't gone to any of the L1s, L2s. Are there clinics at those locations? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. okay. All the yeah. rest stops and at the L5s okay. and all of them. Except L4s. for Port Olisar. Right. Except, I know no, Port yeah. Ol right. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Say, I, chose, I chose Art Corp for about mm -hmm. the same reasons as you. It has everything. Uh, yep. New Babbage lacks a lot of the armor unless you go up to the station. Mm hmm. Um, all the personal weapons I ever wanted, all the ship equipment I really need, pretty much everything's in the area of Arc Corp, either at Arc Corp, Arc L1, L2, or Her L5, which is right there. Mm. Arc Corp has the best bar, too. <laughs> That's true, t -lock. I disagree, but oh, I, come on. I like Wally's, but hey. Yeah, Wally's is nice. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm doing Arc Corp for one reason and one reason only. Mm. The there For some reason, the 890 jump boarding mission seems to be more consistent at mm. R Corp mm. than it is at Microtech. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I'm hoping to see people play like EVE Online players because we don't, EVE Online players, we, we base everything we do off of money. Yeah. And, money. Like, yes. You know, like money, 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 money. And, yep. you know, it's, it's cool and all to not take this seriously, but if you die and get looted and your kit was like 20, 30K, and you can't replace that kit real easy. You're gonna be back to a noob suit with with the basic pistol. Like yep. you know, the 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 whole thing about winning wars and Eve was attrition. If you if you break someone's bank, if they physically can't afford to put more ships out, you win. And and I think that's kind of the mentality people should be having with this now. Is 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 think about like you know. I disagree. No, no, winning against I disagree that the all you, capitalism. All you do is run around in this game chasing that last credit or, or being fearful of losing things. You're going to miss so much. So, I, I, especially at this stage, I, I think right now, you know, none of this stuff is going to persist past, uh, you know, in uh, beta. It, it's probably going to be reset several more times. Maybe. Have fun. You know, yeah, go get the money, you know, if that helps you have fun. Money, 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 money. But I don't I don't think we should make necessarily, you know, money unless that's your mentality. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I just don't think it should be the thing that everybody does if that's not their play style. Grind. Well, I do want people to actually again though, like if you've got a new player to the game who's just made their first hundred K and they they don't take it seriously and they get killed and the ship goes boom and they go boom and they lose there's you know but there's so many ways that that can happen without it being like let me put it this way player kills in this game are like not the number one thing that kills people right let's be real that. It's it's, it's 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 elevators it's bugs it's elevators it's <laughs> ladders you know so getting like, out of bed yeah so so i think at this stage you know maybe i would tell that new person hey you know um, that was unfortunate, but hey, you know, luckily this isn't, this isn't, you know, forever. But and on the other I, side, I'm, I'm, trying, to be, other, I'm trying to be playful and, and you, yeah. no one's getting it. So no, you know. but on the other side, you, 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 you the, the game, the, what they're trying to teach you to do is to be mindful, right? Right. Yeah. Be yeah. mindful of your stuff. Don't just be out there doing, don't take unnecessary risks because there's real consequences. That's going to cost you. May not cost you real money in real life unless you're one of the idiots like me that spends a lot of money in this game, but it could cost you a lot of time to get back to where you were if you're not careful, right? So it makes you be a little bit more cerebral instead of you know having some devil may care attitude towards the game. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I guess there's a difference between being focused strictly on money and you know not no not uh, being mindful. I mean, you can be mindful, but also be mindful and say, okay, yeah, maybe 
I could, you know, get X amount of UEC per hour doing this, but I really would rather go do this. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, well, that's that's not what I meant too. Like the whole UEC per hour thing. What I meant was again was just I want people to to be to, to, mindfulness. I think is is what has been said by you know you, you and a few other people is is mindfulness. Like be mindful and don't. I I think it'll be a rude awakening for those that run and gun and yes. try and solo things and you know want to want to just circle pulled all of SAR for three hours and call themselves PVPers. Also, <laughs> situational know. awareness and be uh, be aware of your surroundings and yes. look up and down when you're in zero G because yep. you know head on a swivel maybe be below or above you. you Close know. your don't, ramp. Don't, don't just think in two dimensions. Yeah, and, and, ga and the game is much more fun with an XL one. I'm just saying. So money is important. You love that XL one. I know. We're, 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 we're going to move on because otherwise it's going to be a three hour show. But we're going to start with um, this week's ISC. Um, I should be sharing it in Discord, and I think we're ready. It's uh, 15 minutes, so I hope you got some popcorn and drinks. So here we go, ISC. <laughs> Hi, we're members from the Space Combat team. It is a cross-disciplinary team from multiple teams at CIG. It includes members from Vehicle Experience team, Vehicle Feature team, Player Experience team, and also several other departments. The main thing about these people is that they're invested in space combat and they're actively playing the game. We're going to discuss the current state of space combat in 3.14 and 3.15, and then we're going to talk about what things are working, what things we're unhappy with, and what changes are coming up in the short and long term to make the experience better. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is the importance of community, because we're not making this game in isolation for us, we're making it with and for you. We went back through all the previous statuses and releases and we looked at what was the most loved features um, out of all these. Um, releases in the past and um, which were the most interesting, what was said about these releases, what they didn't like about these releases. So it's just like an overview of the past design choices and just like an analysis of where they ended up with the game and what experience they brought to the game. The second step was to analyze the works of John Boyd, who did a lot of works related to dogfighting and to military strategy theory in the past, meaning so-called UDA loops, which are really important for us for decision making. The third step was to have a lot of calls and chats with so-called subject matter experts. These are people who in the past were working or flying for the armed forces and have a heavy knowledge in dogfighting. We even went so far to have actual dogfighting lessons in flight simulators with former members of the Royal Air Force. So we brought this all together through a series of combat summits and this involved bringing people from different areas of the company together. So we went away from our kind of day-to-day -day stuff and we got together and talked about you know, all these past releases, these theories we had about combat and how they kind of, you know, translate to the status and experience we were aiming for. And we tried to create a plan, you know, for the next 12 months. So we get asked what the high-level goals are as far as space combat goes to status. This comes down to a few key points, which is a meaningful decision making. Um, so it's um, giving the player options and also giving the players the data to act on. So we give the player the information of the systems that we're building so they can make the choices. The second part is giving every weapon and every vehicle and every other item a proper purpose in the game. And then we embrace those limitations that those choices make. So the players have to make choices. So it isn't just a case of picking the best of everything. The certain limitations that come with picking certain things then basically it's got to feel believable. So we are just artificially making those, you know, limitations for the sake of it. They actually come from real consequences of, you know, of our systems that we build. And the last high level goal we want to achieve is to avoid meta gameplay. We realize this is really hard, um, but we will try to eradicate it as much as possible. So where are we now with space combat? In 3.14 and 15, we tried to establish a new combat foundation, which meant for us stripping out the granular details in space combat balance for the time being and focus only on the base combat experience first. And that affected four key areas. The first was assigning all ships to a specific archetype. 
So no ship was the best for everything. And then it also allowed us to kind of kick off our journey to improve the multicore experience of Star Citizen. So there was a purpose to having more than one person um, in your ship. Second, we did the same thing with weapons. Right now, there are only two archetypes in the game. One type of weapon is good against fighters, the other one is good against large ships. However, we will expand on that in the future. The third aspect is the shields. We simplified many dynamics in the interim to make them more readable and easier to balance. And lastly, we introduced the capacitor gameplay, which in some sort is the stamina gameplay for our thrusters, weapons and shields. So with that state established, we can now talk about the combat improvements we want to try in the short term. And the very first of that is G-Force Exhaustion. In the past, we had a lot of G-Forces, and during dogfighting, G-Force was a very important part of how you handle your ship. That impact was lost over time, and we're currently working on bringing that back, which means lowering the G-Force thresholds to force players to do certain maneuvers to recover from the exhaustion effects. You know, our goal with this is that you'll need to be really careful with, you know, not only how you manage the energy on your ship, but how you manage your ability to sustain Gs over the long term. Let's quickly expand on the weapon archetypes and variations. At the moment, there's only two archetypes for weapons in the game. One is good against fighters, and the other one is good against large ships. But we would like to expand on these types. We would like to see specialized weaponry against infantry, specialized weaponry to intercept ordnance and incoming missiles. We're also thinking about suppression weapons and an unspecialized weapon types like a Jack of all trades, master of none, which you can use for everything, but it might not be the best weapon of choice. In addition to that, you can expect that we're gonna spread out the weapon types as such as well. So you can expect anti-fighter cannons and anti-large ship Gatlings again. Let's talk about shield variances. In 3.14, we had to unify all shield generators of all sizes in order to rebalance them. In 3.15, we started reintroducing differences between those shield generators again. And this was kind of to bring the shields down or within a window that we were happy with, because before there was a difference of up to 90% between different shields, and we thought that was too much, where the player couldn't really make a difference. Going forward, we will try to make the shields more diverse again, so that you have a proper decision to make what to take with you, but still it will only be a moderating variable in the PvP outcome, right? We still want the skill in your dogfighting capabilities to be the deciding factor of the outcome of a dogfight. The power triangle has been super important for us as far as allowing players to manage combat in Star Citizen. It gives players that really cool option to kind of focus their energy on a particular resource that the ship has. But we're still looking at ways we can improve this. So we're looking at kind of adding a non-linear curve to these things. So it doesn't just come in at the same rate throughout the whole kind of region. And we think this might add a really interesting dynamic and just an extra thought that you've got to put in there when you're managing your systems. And we're also retiring with the idea if the weapon capacitor assignment, for example, should affect all the turrets on our ship, which is currently not the case. An important thing we added in 3.15 are minimum regen for all power triangle assignments. So even if you have your full assignment, let's say put to engines, you get still a little bit of regen in your weapon capacitors and on your shields. So flight tuning, right? By far the least important aspect of combat tuning. Just joking. Um, no, we're, we're not happy with the current flight tuning. What we did in 3.14 and 15 was pushing the ships into an archetype space, but that also meant that a lot of the differences between the ships were lost. And we also had to trick some numbers here and there. For example, ships can now strafe up way faster than they can strafe down. That is down to some magic numbers we added, but we actually want to reduce these magic numbers and do it properly with the thruster tuning. This will be, however, a longer ongoing process, but in the end, we will get a more realistic feeling ship handling out of it. What we added in 3.15 by very popular demand are options for the TBI visibility. So you can go into your options now and set your TBI visibility to always on if you do not want the TBI to fade away. This will take a considerable amount of time. So this will be an ongoing thing for quite a while. And an important disclaimer here, we'll try to be as real as possible, but we always have to take it back to the point of fun. We're not aiming for realism. We are aiming for believability and enjoyment. 
The idea of trimming was born out of two things. First, players who play decoupled, they wanted to have a control to actually hover at a certain altitude. And the other thing was, we looked at how military choppers implement their trimming systems. And then we thought, hmm, maybe that is something that can be added, especially for dual stick users. So we investigated a trimming system where you can push a button and then set your left or your right stick in a specific position and you let go of the button and the ship will keep that input. And any kind of input you do afterwards will be in relation to that. So currently we have this in a, in a prototype state and we'll try to give it to the players once it is out. This kind of system will allow mouse and keyboard players to have a smooth thruster control again, as opposed to where currently when they press W and S, they just go to the full forward and backward motion. So that gives us a little bit more control when this type of control is needed. As you might have noticed in 3.14, we somewhat botched the auto gimbal implementation. During flying, you will see that the auto gimbal aiming crosshairs, they were kind of like go all over the place. So in 3.15, we actually fixed that and rewrote how the auto gimbals work. However, we are not really completely happy with the auto gimbal system because at the moment it feels for us like it's being a skill bridge instead of having an actual purpose in the game. So going forward, we're going to investigate what the actual purpose of auto gimbal or the auto gimbal mode in general should actually be. We're also investigating further things like turning off your weapon assists on purpose when you need it. This is certainly not something that the average player will do, but we know a couple of PvP players who really would like to have that option at times. And good news for 3.16, we're adding staggered fire groups for pilots. So we rewrote the staggered firing algorithm, so now it staggers not between all the weapons you have, but between every type of weapon that you have per weapon group, which means we can completely set, give this into the control of a pilot. And the last of the short-term plans, turrets. At the moment, we cannot make turrets just better than, or turret weapons just better than non-turret weapons because uh, a weapon is a weapon. But we're currently working with the weapon team to figure out whether or not we can just buff certain properties of a weapon when they're assigned to turrets. A good use case here is, for example, the hammerhead. While it's very, very dangerous in close quarters, once you get at a specific distance, the bullets, they're just flying too slow to actually make the hammerhead a meaningful anti-fighter platform. And this is what we want to change. So we're investigating whether or not we can just buff all the turrets on the hammerhead without changing the actual weapon itself. So these are a couple of our short-term plans currently in development. We'll show more of them the closer you're getting to be finished. But now let's jump ahead and talk about some long-term plans. Little caveat here, all these things we're going to talk about haven't been started yet and they may still change over time, but we wanted to share our thinking just the same. So one of the most important aspects we want to change in the future is the problem of high speed. We know that high speed combat doesn't work well, and we also know that low speed combat between two and 300 meters per second is incredibly enjoyable. How are we going to resolve that? We don't know yet. We'll see. The next part is ballistic ammo management. At the moment, we have very low ballistic numbers in the game, and this is because the physicalized armor system is not online yet. So you can expect some changes towards ballistic ammo and how we manage ballistic ammo in the future. We also would like to introduce a custom operator mode for EMP, because as a pilot, you need more data and more information what you can do in order to shut down another ship that you're fighting against. We also toyed with the ideas of flak. We would like to have a flak concept that is an area denial weapon that works against fighters or missiles or even incoming projectiles. Also, we're currently working with the AI team to copy typical flight maneuvers that players do to AI ships. And in the same vein, we also would like to try to have AI ships not using, you know, abusive behaviors that are, well, less enjoyable. A last long-term goal we would like to do is to deepen the capacitor gameplay. But this requires also that other long-term changes like, you know, high-speed combat are resolved first. Um, we would like to think about things like adding more thrust, adding more active management on the, on the assignment and other more active effects. So before we let you go, let's talk about the importance of the community, because this is something which really matters a lot to us as a team. Community is incredibly important for our process. A lot of the design decisions that informed our combat summits were actually based on proposals that the community did. When it comes to balancing, community is incredibly helpful in providing us data 
that allows us to nail down issues fast, finding balance problems. They even sometimes get us like tell us, hey, this is the wrong, this is the wrong number in the game data that there is. So going forward, we would like to do more playtesting with you, the community. Sometimes we're gonna stay undercover, sometimes not. Also, I would like to say that while we might not reply to every spectrum threat we see, we read everything. So please always give us your feedback, give us your opinions, because in the end, it will help us to make a better game. So thank you for your continued cooperation and support for us and enjoy IAE next week. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the vehicle experience team is using every resource available from real world subject matter experts to their own experiences in actual military flight simulators. And of course, the feedback that you all provide in Spectrum and beyond to make the future of space combat as fun and enjoyable as can be. Yeah, take realism, adjust that to believable and bring it back to fun. Now, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo begins next week, and it's the biggest ship and vehicle showcase of the year. You're going to get a chance to check out almost everything Star Citizen has to offer and maybe experience a few reveals here and there. Uh, be sure you don't miss out on that. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. All right, should we? Yeah, everything is that. Yeah, so I, that, I think that was a good ISC. And people seem to be enjoying this form, this deep dive form that they did. So let's go in order. Um, Admiral Kusanagi, what are your thoughts? Uh, this week's uh, ISC was fantastic. I mean, the pacing was on point. They went over a ton of stuff. Um, I mean, uh, there's this just so much to talk about. I know there's, there's plenty of other people here. I'm I'm kind of uh, very interested in the the new uh, weapon types, um, like for instance the flak, um, and what they're going to bring out. Uh, that I know they talked about right now. We just have uh, weapons for fighters and weapons for large ships. So I like to see how see how they're gonna like uh, make that a little bit more uh, um, polished. Okay, Dark Knight, you there? Yep, I'm here. So yeah. the only the the one thing I would add or, or or comment on is I love the fact that they talked about community and how much the input that we give them helps them to develop the game. We are here to help a company develop a game that in the future is going to be something that so many people enjoy and they they value what we give to them, the input that we give to them. And, you know, I'm not a combat pilot, but I think this is just, you know, it's a step in the right direction. We already had mining is already fleshed out. Now it's, they're working on something else. And, you know, the fact that they're getting the, they're really relying on the input from their community to help build this and help make it better, I think is just, Par and tar, you know, it's pars and pars, parcel to the um, development of the game as a whole. I think it's just an amazing thing that we are we are helping. Oh, yeah. sorry, we are helping them build the game, and this is why I'm here, and this is where my money is going <laughs> to help them build a game. You know. All right, cool. Face to face, you got something different to say. No, I'm kidding. Go Not ahead. really. <laughs> no, I mean it's pretty much the same spot on with DK. Um I feel the same way too. I mean, I like to see definitely see um how the way they deal with the meta. Meta in every game that I've been in has always been an issue. You know, um, but being that this is a different type of game, I would like to see how the way they handle it and you know, tackle that issue. And if they can do it. I'm definitely giving them a round of applause. Cool. Okay, uh, resident contrarian. What do, what do you got? What, what, what are your criticism? Well, uh, talking to me, right? I'm pretty sure yeah. you're talking to me. Yeah, I'm just thinking, uh, yeah, go, Mav. Um, it is a noble cause to try to snuff out the meta. Um, I don't believe it's a good use of time. Um, or if it is necessarily possible um, in a 
in any kind of game where the capabilities of your ship are determined by components. There will always be a combination of components that will give an edge in certain scenarios. Um, and, or at least give you enough of an edge, right? You know, say like uh, across other ships that you may come across in your play style. If I am a ship fighter PVPer, like if I, you know, I'm flying a, a, a Talon or a Gladius or an Arrow or whatever may be considered the, the most agile weapons platform to do that with, there's going to be a build that's going to give me a higher level of survivability as well as lethality. Um, now, yes, people are going to make choices uh, whether or not they're going to be more survivable or deal more damage, but those are still going to exist within the meta. So I feel like they should almost do like, and not copy other games, but instead of trying to, you know, fight against the wind on that, maybe lean into it, learn from it, and then, then counter, counter abusive tactics as they see them come up. Uh, I think maybe they're going for a more broader thing. Like it's been said that they don't like mono boats for, for, for um, example, maybe that, that's the kind of meta they meant, but they, 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 they said they want to eradicate meta. Maybe there is a, a bit broad or wasn't concise on, on that point, but I choose me. Yeah. I mean, right now, I mean, right now someone can say, Hey, the gladius with these shields and these weapons are the is the most dangerous deadly fighter class ship in the game and in pvp with all things being equal against any other equally skilled pilot it will come out on top right that could be considered the meta right now well yeah, you know, in most cases, that's that's that, that's going to be the case. Um, you know, or there's going to be something like that that's going to be uh, the case, right? Unless they go up against uh, another ship that is more kitted out for higher survivability, it may counter that meta. That's so. That's why I think they should try to uh, go after, not try to, because what you end up seeing is normalization, and that's the last thing we want. Here's a question for everyone else. Do you think it's too early to worry about the meta? No. No. They need to be doing know. it now. I agree. The, the counter his points on the whole, them kind of wasting their time on trying to counter the meta, no, they're, they're doing the right thing. Because right now, it, this is not only for Star Citizen, but also for Squadron 42. And if you don't get these ships balanced in a playable way, where it's, where they, there's, there's a tic-tac-toe, not just a, Pick a Gladius if you just want to win an Arena Commander or die, you know, because it's it's not like that right now in the universe. There's no good counter to some of these ships. There's no counter to the Vanguard. It's Vanguard or death. Even the Ion, I don't think, is going to be a good counter to the Vanguard. Um, you want a monster PvP ship? Take a Vanguard Sentinel. All right, go ahead. Were you done with your point? I, I don't know. I've, I've I've seen I've seen skilled Talon fighters take out Vanguard Sentinels, but maybe you know the the, the Talon fighter was a was a more skilled than the Vanguard pilot, you know. Um, but yes, there are there right now there are more metas that kind of stick out um, right now. But I think as as the game matures, you'll have more counters to that. But there are just going to be situations where there's you're going to be in a stronger ship than the guy you're fighting, um, and that's just you know you can always run real. away. You can yeah, always that's run that's away. just real. Wow. There's all there, you know. You there's going to be a situation. You know, uh, right now in 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 you know um, in in real life, right? Not to tie everything back to real life because this is a thousand years in the future. 
It's, it's, it's always a, a, a battle for air superiority, right? And it's always a leapfrog where there's one, one weapons platform that's flying around that's just head and shoulders better than any other country's uh, uh, weapons platform and what their ability to produce. And then they'll come out with something that trumps that, right? There's always going to be something. It's going to be a cat and mouse game. And then I think that's going to be part of it. But there's also ways to ways to defend against that. You know, hey, look, if this if there's a jerk that's flying in with the strongest ship in the game, uh, we'll disengage and don't give him something to do. Right. Don't fight him if you're going to be if you're not in something that can counter it. Don't run up on a hammerhead if you're in a freaking Pisces. Hmm. All right. Uh, let, let's uh, get to the rest of people. Uh, welcome back, Griffin. Uh, Hodo, you, 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 you spoke, but I don't think that, that was your point. Do you, do you have any uh, th thoughts for your for this ISC? I thought this ISC was great. Um, by far the best in a long while for me. I'm PvP-centric. I do a lot of piracy. I see the metas, and I see what they're talking about. I watch a lot of PvP streamers. Um, I, I, I'm excited for a lot of the little things they were talking about. Like, they realize the turret issues, the auto gimbal crutch. I mean, the list goes on and on. They 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 are aware of the issues, whereas before it seemed like they were completely aloof or just ignorant to the fact there was problems. Yeah, people were saying, were a constant refrain, do, 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 do the developers play their own game? And I think this proves that they do. At least some of them. <laughs> All I right. mean, the vehicle experience team are knocking it out the park. Um, every patch they've done something on, they have done something great from the flight model rework to missiles operator mode to the new capacitor system. They are really taking this game in a good direction. They're not just trying to make it fighters in World War II fighters in space. All right. Jade, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I'd like to go to where they were talking about subject matter experts. Um, so um, I believe Hodo and I were talking about this uh, before the show. I, I do hope that they, with these these um, fighter pilots, I do hope that that is specifically for atmospheric combat. And uh, because, I mean, if you're going to have a subject matter expert in space combat, I mean, you know, there really isn't one. I mean, you could you could get maybe some astronauts on how you know maneuvering with RCS thrusters uh, should feel. William Shatner. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> He's the subject matter expert on space combat. Yeah, but but seriously, like I I love that they do this. Like I loved one of the reasons I backed this game was when I watched one of the lore makers guides of the galaxies, and they said that they consulted with an astrophysicist on um, the systems that they built, the star systems, right? So more, more, please, CIG. I, I'd love you to, you know, keep doing this um, as we see other areas of the game and professions fleshed out. And that's all. Okay, thank you, uh, Calabari. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so um, I'm very glad that they um they touched on um the the past, the current, and the future because I think that's what um that whole um. I guess the um, the trinity I, I, or the triangle is what you can call it is what um, many in the community uh, really look forward to hearing. You know what's been done, um, what are their views on what's been done, um, what's currently being done, and where are they headed. Because um, sometimes they may touch on on some topics, and when they touch on it, we may not really be too sure of where they're headed. So it's good that they're talking about that now, especially um, not just for this ISC, but um, you know recently, especially um, to what was previously previously mentioned by Jade in terms of the um the consult and the consultation with um experts um it's really nice and refreshing to hear them draw reference to that because um not just um on flight but you know some some in the community raise concerns sometimes uh as to whether CIG does consult with um experts and the fact that you know they have mentioned this um kind of reveals that and also justifies that sometimes they may not entirely uh, take a very large portion. They will consult with the expert, but in terms of the whole mentioning of fund that Yogi had provided had stated, 
um, they may not take a large percentage of what the expert may say, and that's okay, right? Um, it may not actually fit the satisfaction of a, um, com a community member or a group of community members based on how much they invested in flight combat or in you know gun combat, etc. But it's nice that they still take some kind of factor of the um, of experts into consideration so that that, act, that kind of aspect and that kind of um, factor is considered and is integrated into the game. Uh, the, the last thing that I want to touch um, on is um, that whole, um, you know, the whole meta experience, because it is true that it is difficult to um, eliminate. I mean, it is my belief that you can't really eliminate anything, but you can only, you know, reduce it as much as possible. Um, in terms of whether or not it may be a good idea to do it now, I I do think that it is a good idea to do it now because we don't have as much input factors that contribute to as much um, responses. And when I say responses, I mean like you know the situations that may lead to you losing in a fight or a mission. Uh, because uh, uh, there's something called design of experiments, right? And the more, um, the less input factors that you have. And this is going to be the conclusion. Um, the, le the less input factors that you have, um, the closer the responses, right? So that's why sometimes you would have a meta. Right? You don't have as many input factors, and as a result, you don't. And if you don't have as many responses or many consequences, then you'll see a more noticeable meta. But the fact that they're actually they may be focusing on eliminating the meta now means that they will have or be able to notice more information on what may the, the, be the meta now so that when they actually create more variety in say the weapons um other input factors like the physicalized damage and those things it'll have a wider variety a wider distribution of um how someone may die and as a result the meta at least will be a bit more that curve will be not as steep at least once they continue with the balancing as they release those variety of features that that's it for me now, to your point about the expert, uh, they mentioned they've been uh, space simulating dogfighting with the Royal Air Force. That's your crowdfunding mm. money at work, ladies and gentlemen. They, you, they're teaming up with the Royal Air Force to, um, now nah, I'm messing, with, messing around. But uh, I mean, that, that did, um, I, I did find it interesting. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to get um, some real world experience. Um, from um, military veterans, and yeah, that they're, um, they're, they're trying to make to try to make it as really possible w w without making it um, unfun. Put it out, put it out. Yeah. Way. All right, popping face. What are your thoughts? Um, uh, really, basically to go back, um, what um, DK said. I'm not a, a combat pilot, but I'm glad to see that they're getting it a lot of love and. Um, you know, everything else is being flushed out. So this needs it just as well as everything else. I'm glad that, uh, looking at the ballistics. So those people are, are happy, but I was really, um, happy to see them talk about flag that, um, as Admiral said, um, you know, I, I think that would be a good addition to, for those combat fighters and things like that. Okay. Rain cloud. Last and certainly least. Um, there's a few things, actually. Uh, you know, one, I feel like this video was a whole bunch of me sitting there going, yep, told you so, um, to a lot of people that I've uh, communicated with. Uh, one thing is for those that don't know what OODA loop is, OODA loop is your tactical decision-making space. It stands for observe, orient, decide, and act. And above that is a, what we call a strategic layer decision-making space, which is SWATs, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and I love that they're, again, being a veteran, that you know they're they're seeking uh, subject matter experts on that. You know, I want to see if they're going to seek subject matter experts for like close quarters combat and FPS and things like that. Um, I I love this whole ISC. It was really really good. Um, you know, we know the devs do play the game. Um, but this is where I'm probably going to get a lot of pushback, but I'm prepared to get it as the only person in this room that's worked on an active live service multiplayer game as far as I'm aware of. Um, designing for meta is lazy design. It is bad game design, and it always leads to the meta being adopted as a form of abuse towards players that either don't want to engage with the meta or cannot. Um, I have a huge issue, for example, with them saying that Gimbal is like this skill crutch thing. 
Um, no, your responses of get good scrub is not a valid response. Don't give it to me. When you've got people like me, for example, with vision and accessibility issues, and there are other people in this room of vision and accessibility is issues, your, your response to, well, just get good scrub is it's not a valid response. It's an ableist response um, that says, well, you know, everyone must be uber elite hacks or gamer like me. I don't like that they're doing this. I don't care that you don't like it. I want to be able to play the game too, which is also not a valid response that I've seen people throw out on like Reddit and stuff, which is, well, this game isn't for you then. Yes, it is. They have the ability to make this game for us. And I'm really not happy with them having this sort of mentality of, you know, um, auto gimbal shouldn't be a skill crutch. Well, then I guess I'm not going to do PvP then because to hell with me and people like me with vision and accessibility issues, right? That pissed me off. Everything else is really good. And so, like, to go back to the meta thing, you should be fighting the meta. You should be designing against meta at every possible stage because the meta will be used for splitting and dividing your community. <laughs> and you'll get things, like, especially in MMOs like World of Warcraft, where if you're not the meta build, then you get kicked out of raids or whatever, and, and you don't get to do the thing you want to do. I, for example, I don't give a damn the Gladius is, is not, could be the best fighter in the game. I don't want to fly it. I want to fly something else. And if the response to that is, well, tough shit, you lose, that's bad game design, I'm sorry. Period. It is bad, lazy game design, especially in a game like this. And to go to the real world, we have like half a dozen different jet jet fighters for a reason. The F-15 does something better than the 16, than the 18, than the A-10. We don't have a meta A-10 that we use to do everything. It has its role. That's what I want to see in this game. Light fighter, medium fighter, heavy fighter, everything has its role and its purpose. And if people want there to be like, this is the I win ship, I, I really, truly hope you end up sorely disappointed if that's what you want. I got a question. Are you quoting Reddit or are you quoting CIG? Because I never heard CIG say that the that the um, the Aegis, um, what was the ship again? The, um, uh, the Gladius. That the Gladius was Reddit. the ship. I think the Reddit. only thing I've ever heard. Oh, Reddit. Okay. Yeah. If you notice, we don't quote, quote Reddit on this show. I don't know if you okay. noticed. <laughs> that. So I'll stop, I'll stop <laughs> doing it we then. We really stop, do I'll not stop, quote. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying, and, and, I, and I understand why, you know, you mentioned it because a tremendous amount of people in the community do, but, you know, the Reddit is not the authority for this game. And there are a lot of backseat quarterbacks and backseat developers on Reddit. Yeah. Uh, and I can understand people expressing their desires for the game, right? Yeah. But to, your point, to yeah. your point, a lot of times people say stuff on there and it becomes gospel. And, and it's like, yeah. only thing I've ever heard about the Gladius is that it is the ship to be familiar with because it's in Squadron 42, but yes. not that it is, like you said, the, you know, the Frankenstein ship that you got to know how to fly, you know, so. Exactly. Right. Right. My question, I, I don't see, I don't see any, I, I, I hear everybody talking about metas, I don't see it. I don't see that there is a, a single superiority ship in this game right now. There may be a ship that like a certain group of people gravitate towards, but if they run across the wrong person in an Avenger, Amen. they're going to die. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So there's, there is, there is, so they're fighting the freaking wind on this and it is not there. They've done a good job giving, giving players choice and 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 saying hey look that you you can you can go fly an arrow a gladius or a talon or an avenger or if you're really good uh, a saber or or a vanguard or hell throw a connie in there i mean i've seen folks tear up some gladiuses and arrows and talons in a, in a connie so what are we talking about here we also have to remember this is a game in development and all these meta ships right. are, are constantly i remember when the they're always changing yeah. i remember when the, uh, oh, what was, what was the the bounty hunting ship, the uh, um, oh, I forget oh, the name of it. The Buccaneer. Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember when that was meta for like a hot right, five minutes, right? right. Yeah. This stuff is always changing. It's mm. not a real problem that they should be wasting time trying to solve. Not That's my problem. Time. I, don't see, I, don't think, yeah, I don't think they saw it as a problem. I think what they said was they want to be aware of it because they talked about, they even said that we don't want these ships to be, you know, like this is the ship of all ships to have. They made that very clear. Uh, but I do appreciate awareness of the balance so that, like, to Rain's point, 
you know, and yeah. I and, and I have seen rain. I have seen people who really balk about the whole gimbal, the auto gimbal thing. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they, and and they and 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 don't get me wrong. I'm sure there are some people in the game who use auto gimbling to their advantage because they don't want to try to do better, right? Mm. But to your point, there are some people who are casuals in the game, and it becomes an equalizer for them if they are attacked by somebody who right. has greater skill than they do. I'm one of those people. I'm minding my business in the verse. I'm in most cases, I'm trying to go do something. But if I'm going to go against that ace pilot, that person who's really, really good, who decides to attack me, and that gives me a little bit of edge, it's not going to be some tremendous edge with me being a mediocre pilot that's going to get me to defeat them every time. But at least I feel like I have something that gives me an opportunity of advantage a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. You know, well, so, I, don't, I don't, I don't necessarily want an advantage. Like I'm legally blind in one eye, and I have oh, yeah. a busted right no, hand. No, right, I just want to be able to play the game. You know, no, you and you and your points were well made. I'm saying yeah. I'm the person who doesn't have any of those things, but as a mediocre player, right, it's not going to make yeah. me an ace pilot just because <laughs> I've got auto gambling. You know what I'm saying? Because no. there's things like strategy, what yes. weapons I use. You know, there's yeah. all these. And in fact, they even talked about that in here about it's not going to be about what components you put in your ship, but your skill at what you do. Right. Yeah. So as long as they keep that as a focus, I, I think we're going to be OK. But to Jade's point, we always tell people ain't nothing written in cement yet. You know what I yeah, mean? We're going to yeah. see this stuff yeah. rehashed and reflipped and rebalanced. We aren't even in beta yet. And people it, get so the, fired up. The yeah. auto gimbals thing, they should not. This is absolutely what they should not be doing is this game. Is supposed to be for a large group of people. They should not be looking at auto gimbals because some people who are, you know are elite PvP pilots don't like them mm -hmm. because this game also has to have a skill floor, mm -hmm. right? Well, and that's what the auto gimbals were brought in for in the first place. The, what I, what would be a waste of time was for them to recognize that they needed auto gimbals as a skill floor take them out and then they have to bring mm, some form of it back again it. Mm, right yeah. yeah yeah that would be funky well and and the well, thing there real quick too from a, a design perspective like so again to go back to the game that i worked on was you would have like 10 maybe 10 percent of the player base would be really really active in like your theory crafting and stuff like that i'm not gonna design for just them because the other 90 percent of the player base doesn't give a damn they just want to play you. right so designing for them, I mean, I love Moist Noodle, for example, VIP in his chat, love him to death, right? But all he does is circle Port Olisar and call himself a PvPer. I don't want the game built for him and Salty Mike and, and Morphologist and all. I love them all. I don't want the game built for just the Twitch content creators. There are three other than a half million people, you know, attached to this project. If you're designing for just your top elite, you're doing it wrong. Hell, to go to World of Warcraft, Ulduar, the last boss in Ulduar was seen by 0.6% of a 12 million active user registered account player base. So it. We've seen this before, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not the first time <laughs> I remember back. Same, when we, same. We, we talked about this when the jousting came in and a whole bunch yeah. of other things. And and, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, gang. I, I think CIG is, it, they have enough self-awareness, right? They're on point, yeah. Um, they do. And, and, and there are those times when they've done faux pas and they go back and they straighten it out. And there's going to be always people who want a little bit more of the game because it's the way they want the game to be. Yep. But I say it all the time on this show. Chris Roberts says, I'm making the game. I want to play, not y'all. I'm going to jump so, right here and right there. And we're going to move on. Uh, you ready to move this, on? Uh, Let's move wait, on. Wait, no, no, no. no. This, I, this is the point that I, that I, that, that I, that okay. I had typed, that, 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 um, written down. At the beginning mm -hmm. of this video, um, he said, um, we're making this game with and for you. And that's, right. that, that's not something that they, they normally say. That, that, no. Um, We've been hearing the thing that you just said, Griffin, about Chris Roberts. He's making a game that he that he wants to play. And, but so with and for you doesn't that, mean no. But with and for you, he is. They are making it with us because we are contributing. But they have also said we listen to what the community has to say. But my point is, Chris Roberts' vision trumps any of that. That's my I, point. I want to. We get we get on. great suggestions, and they take those suggestions. But yeah. ultimately. Chris is going to be the final word. And I don't think Chris is ever going to be in a situation where, well, this is what everybody wants, so I'm going to change what no. I think for them. That's not going to happen. That's right. not going to happen. I, I want to throw in a clarification on the auto gimbals thing. Sure. The auto gimbals thing, what they're, what a lot of the PVPers complain about, it's not 
on the ships themselves, like the auto gimbals for your, your guns on the pilot control. Mm -hmm. Most PVPers are fine with that because they understand that is something that assists the the lower skill players or the starting players or just players who don't have the time to study and do those things. Mm -hmm. They're more complaining about the auto gimbals on the turrets, which are way more powerful than the auto gimbal on the pilot. Like They, they mm. had to be because people couldn't hit shit in turrets for the most part. Yeah, that's there was well, yeah they can't well. hit. That, that's they why they're bringing up the point of, of, if you notice, Yogi Klot said, we realize that They've the got turrets it. are currently not working correctly. Like, you can just stay out of range of a hammerhead and kill it, but the auto gimbals didn't fix the issue. The mm -hmm. issue was never really with the auto gimbal. It was the velocity of the rounds. Mm -hmm. You couldn't hit anything because the rounds moved at a walking pace. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can literally move one kilometer before it gets to you, it's never going to hit you. I don't care how it. good of a gunner yeah. you are. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, And, you know, if you look at... Uh, hang on, hang on. J2 came in. Let's get J2 and We need yeah, to move on because there's a lot in this piece. Yeah, I just wanted to add that, you know, if you go back to the beginning and look at when auto gimbals came in, they came in for those same reasons, because you couldn't hit shit with your main guns. Mm -hmm. um, it was a time of really bad performance in the game, and, you know, you, you needed that little extra bit. And it was only the guys, not only the guys who had a high skill level, but high equipment level, too. These guys are playing on serious rigs. Um that were able to get good kills in PvP. So the the auto gimbals were introduced, and in the beginning when they first came in, they were more powerful than fixed weapons. Um, it didn't make any sense to run fixed, because your hit rate was just so much higher on the, on the auto gimbals. And then the game performance got better, and fixed weapons came back. Mm -hmm. So I don't think auto gimbals uh, necessarily themselves are a problem. They just haven't nailed the balance yet. Mm -hmm. As, you know, they, they bring the auto gimbals in to fix a, a problem and then that the you know the performance comes up and that problem fixes itself and now auto gimbals are overpowered now they've nerfed the auto gimbals and fixed is better and you know performance has gotten better and now it's going to be the same thing with the uh with the turrets they needed to add something to turrets just so that um you know we could do what they needed to do mm -hmm. but that it, it still doesn't solve the problem and i believe it'll be tuned down over time just the same way you know the standard auto gimbals will okay Coffee Gaming, thank you for the 13 month subscription. Hey, and thank you, Coffee. Yeah, thank you, thank you. J2, the only thing I, the only thing I, uh, I, I the, the thing you picked up, the thing I picked up was from the thing you said at the beginning. You said it was a time of poor performance. I like to be, I like to refer to those as the dark times. Yes, those are without a doubt the dark, the dark times, times Fastcard. Yeah. I, it, it, some might argue that we're still in those dark times. They're, <laughs> we're, we're just starting to see the, the little the breaks light, in the clouds the these days. Fastcard, why am I not on screen? Did you just like, little rays? Just, you know, You're like not sharing your video. I was sharing my. Did I? Oh, you, you were. You You're right. right. I was. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> I did. He did. Look at broadcast <laughs> alert. Yeah, he's at broadcast alert. Oh, I'm sitting here trying to type to Abdi Johan. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, not paying attention. I'm not paying attention to the mod screen. Why would I do that? Now, boy, uh, yeah, the right obviously. One? There you go. Yeah, I right did that one? like 10 okay. minutes ago. I'm like, why don't you stay on your video? Oops. Thank no, you. that's the wrong I'm video. Sorry. People are talking to me during the show. I'm sorry. That's the wrong video. Is it? I thought that was the wrong one. Yeah, I'm showing you like everything except for what I should be showing you. <laughs> that's my Chrome picture. Where's my thing? Technical difficulties, folks. There you go. There you There's go. your All beautiful right. face. Awesome. So I, I think we we covered everything, right? I don't think we um mm -hmm. everyone had had their points. Yeah. Okay. Good so I see. Good I see. And, I, and I'm sure that the people who are into who've been asking for some updates on combat are happy. So it's good yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was a good I see. All right. So you want to you want to put people in on the machinima? Yeah, we've got an interesting machinima this week. I stumbled on this one today, actually, and uh, I'm not going to say nothing about this. It's only like about four minutes long, five minutes long, but I like it. So I'm hoping that this is the future of uh, the future of <laughs> Star Citizen. Uh -oh. Okay, okay that's, he's hyping it up a bit. All right, here we go. The, the machinima. It's called Star Citizen Desert of Terror. It's short machinima. It's done by... Uh, mod 81 game world. So here we go.
exotic wind. Sounds like trouble. Let's get out of here. Man, Halloween was last week. I thought we were all over with this stuff, but no, Griffin had to pull this one out of the hat. Nice going, Griffin. Nice going. <laughs> now now so that everybody's traumatized. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> all right, let's it start for the middle me. this time. Go ahead, Fist. Um, yeah, it was funny. <laughs> funny. It was funny. <laughs> yeah, horror movies are never. I've I've never really been scared of horror movies. You know, horror movies are always funny to me. You know, but it was funny. It was funny. I mean, you know. The Exorcist. Let me know. What'd you say, Admiral? I said you should go watch The Exorcist and then let me think. Oh, okay. oh that was funniest. Oh, that was the funniest one too. Oh yeah, my god, that was the funniest. That was one of the funniest things that happened. That was the funniest when she turned her head and she walked down those steps on, on her um on her hands and feet. Wow. That was the funniest thing I've ever seen. You crazy no spoilers. You're no spoilers. spoiling a thirty-year movie. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, my bad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My bad. I'm so sorry. But it was it was funny. Griff, you when said no spoilers. That movie is older than I am. Right. You know, <laughs> if you ain't right. seen it yet, a you gonna see it. I seen it a lot. I, of I don't see it. Hey, there's the, a statute of limitations. Yeah, <laughs> there's right. a statute of limitations. You I'm got a 30 years. That yeah. movie's older than me. I don't care. <laughs> like, All right, uh, go back. What are your thoughts? Uh, I thought it was it, it was cute, but I, I, my, my only question is like, ooh, where did they get these zombies from? Like, yeah, is that going to be yeah. in a bunker? Like, you know, what kind of uh, you know, uh, what kind of assets did they? You know, was this something they just added in to something else? Or yeah, that was they... composting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was really good editing to get that all together. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. They, you know, they did a good job with that. Um, now, I would have liked to see that um, him turn that mining laser and just slice it in half, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry. A little dead space there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, you know, I'm, uh, this this my, this laser can break rocks. What's it going to do to the de de decomposing flesh? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> All right, hold on. What's your thought? 
I thought he was surprisingly calm for the situation. Right. And <laughs> I personally would have needed a new undersuit and would have been out of there as soon as I saw it and wouldn't have bothered shooting it. I would have left the Cutlass and I wouldn't have needed a ship. <laughs> then again, I'm also not a big fan of the Cutlass, so it would have been mm. there anyway. Okay, would I say and go fly a Drake, dine a Drake? He died exactly. in the Drake. But he wasn't flying when he died. That's true. That's true. Uh, J2, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, I, I am impressed with their their composting ability, putting these outside assets into this game film and making them look pretty pretty spot on. That's that's good work. Uh, aside from that, I, I'm kind of with Fist. I, I I just don't like zombies, man. Zombies annoy me more than they scare me. <laughs> um, not that there aren't scary horror movies out there, because uh, you know Jaws. I you know I, I saw Jaws when I was a kid. I still have trouble getting in the water at the beach. <laughs> but uh, hey, do but yeah, don't, zombies don't have just never been uh, ne never been at the top of my list for things to be to jump about. Okay, Jade. How about you? Yeah, I th well, first of all, as it's already been mentioned. Uh, yeah, but doing doing this composite type work that's high marks for me for, for anybody that does that in machinima. Um, yeah, it yeah, is it technically so good. very good. Yeah, technically, it's technically very good. Even the lighting uh, on this part here on this guy is great stuff. Uh huh. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you, Jake. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, I I, I agree about uh, he was way too calm for that situation, but um, you know this this makes a case for like remote controls for our ships because like my my think was you got a group of zombies chasing you, you got a Drake, just blow it up, <laughs> kill them all, and you got rid of your Drake. Two problems solved. <laughs> yeah, but how did he get off the planet though? <laughs> That's what that's what a service beacon's for. Hey, just regenerate, right? Mm -hmm. You call space Uber. You get D, you get DK to come pick you up. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? <laughs> can, can you imagine when 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 he wakes up and, and after you regenerate, he's he gonna have a zombie marked, zombie bite marked all over all over his body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, Kalradi, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so um, you know, uh. I I really liked the idea that he uh, that um of what he presented with the whole zombie thing because that's honestly something that I didn't actually think about in terms of um uh I guess what we can deem them to be enemies right um we've all talked about predators aliens attacking us and those things but you know there are um you know, organisms that are of hu the human nature, things like reavers in Firefly and Serenity, as well as other humanoids that can actually, it, if possible, using because of some kind of drug issue or some kind of virus or some kind of viral outbreak that can actually be possible um, in the game um, via some kind of lore and on some kind of remote uh, facility. So um, it's a very, very interesting idea. Um, and I hope that CIG later on or so um, may think about it, especially with how we have from the sub flare, we have, you know, that kind of mutated eye kind of thing. Um, and uh, I really hope that CIG does consider it um, at some point in the future, that whole, you know, that mutation that a human can actually undergo because of some kind of viral outbreak and how they themselves outside of aliens can also be our own enemies. Mm. So yeah, really good. All right, Pops, what are your thoughts? Um, I I like the use of the lighting. It has that um, like what is that? Uh, War of the Worlds mm. feel to it. If uh, mm -hmm. those that mm -hmm. remember it. Mm -hmm. Um, but thank you, Griff, for giving Chris Roberts his idea. Now he's going to put this in, and we're going to be adding another five years for him to put <laughs> in the game. Thank you, Griff. I'm surprised no one commented on, on, on the audio, the sound, and stuff like that, the creepiness of the sound. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, it was kind of uh, generic, I'm be honest. I'm be honest on that one. Though. It, mm. it was, it was. I've, I've heard him before. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not being critical. I'm yes, you saying. are. Yes, you are. 
<laughs> I, didn't stand out. I, got, I gotta agree with fist to face it is very generic <laughs> as far as that goes i mean the sound, sound design could have been better it's creepy but it's like generic creepy like we've heard this before it's very familiar but mm -hmm. it doesn't stand out as oh this is over the top creepiness yeah. it doesn't stand out good or bad it's just there yeah exactly don't you don't notice it which is probably what they were going for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a little too many times for my liking. Griffin, don't 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 roll your head off doing a doing a head roll just now. Okay? No, I, head. I was nodding my head. I was like, yes, I was nodding my head. Yeah. Rain cloud. How about you? To quote the TF2 meme, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's yep. it. Yep. Right. Admiral Kusanagi. Well, I think this goes. It was very good. I don't like, you know, I don't like horror. Like, I don't know. Like, I the, the that movie I mentioned is is very good. Um, it's probably because I was brought up Roman Catholic and I know the Nicene Creed by heart and all this other stuff. I know that a lot of people fainted and puked during that when that movie came out back in the seventies. So, mm -hmm. um, but to get to this, it's like almost like he had too much ship. He had a three, well, two to three person ship. Um, no one was watching his back. He had his door wide open. This is why you don't um, do solo he, play, right? He, he should have been like in a 135C, which of course is an origin <laughs> ship for Griffin. And it has a ladder, so you'd have to like walk up the ladder. So that kind of protects him, you know. I'm just saying, do, use the right ship for the right job. <laughs> and it's also, it's also light freight. Um, so I, I think this is really, and like, I've used a Cutlass Black back in the day, and like if someone, or even like a, say a freelancer, if, if someone's going out, you, the other person goes in the turret. You know, uh, if you're going to go into the older older bunker missions, like someone jumps up on the turret, make sure, or like a box mission, someone goes up on the turret to make sure, see who's uh, coming in. So I kind of feel like, you know, uh, if you're going out there alone like that, I I feel like someone should be watching your back, and if not, you should be doing. Um, the 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 job like in a, in a in a safe manner using like like everyone's talked about using you know correct um um you know standard operation procedures here so i, I think that's that's but besides that the yeah hell no you need a flamethrower for that shit <laughs> Ram made me laugh he said griffin called just causes trouble in almost as bad as fast car I, I, i'm i'm glad I, I, someone someone finally sees that <laughs> uh, 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 Dark Knight, my bad. Dark Knight, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no problem. Um, no, that I I love horror. I love horror films because they're just fun. You know, sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they get you a little bit of jump. Um, You're crazy. But, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but given that, um, it was all right. But I, I I'll have to say I I have to I judge it in against another horror star citizen machinima that I just recently saw called the Pika wing. And that scared the crap out of me. This was, this was kind of like a, eh, okay. It, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit spooky here and there. Um, and the sound was good. The special effects, I will admit that zombie special effect was really good. I don't know how they did it. Um, I thought that was very, very cool. Um, but other aspects of it, it was all right. You know, the sound was okay. It was, you know, it, was, it had a bit of suspense to it, but it it just didn't tickle me the right way that I thought the other film that I saw did. Hmm. Maybe we'll get, I, I'll share it with you all, but, um, and I think I posted it in our Discord, but. Um, yeah, I was going to show it, that one, and I decided to show this one instead. Yeah, so hold on to it because we'll one. do it for next time. Yeah, yeah I'll hold on to that one because. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, you know all, all I gotta all I gotta say now is the the number of 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 people in this channel that are just like, oh hey, murder, <laughs> y'all scare shit out of me. You know that, right? I'm just saying, <laughs> like, oh hey, murder death kill, isn't that just cute and adorable and okay. giggles? I'm okay, over with here. That being, right, with that being said, I gotta take a poll. So who's what? 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 What is your favorite scary? Or what, what is your favorite scary movie? A oh, movie scary. Oh no, we'll be. Let's finish this up before we right, get that's to the whole show. <laughs> that's <laughs> our, that's for Soul Citizens that's after, after Dark. That's after Dark. Yeah, yeah that's, that's after, after dark, dark, right? That's after Dark. I was, okay, I, I, I was gonna say. I was gonna say Thriller. But go ahead. Oh, God. <laughs> we can ask. We can ask so, what everyone's favorite cereal is right now. 
No, oh, like, no oh, after real, dark. Yeah. After no, dark. Oh no, please. All right. So let me go on this real quick. I didn't really present this from the zombie thing. I wasn't at promoting zombies in Star Citizen. Pops, just so you know, I wasn't promoting zombies. <laughs> yes, you were. What I what yeah. I was promoting was the whole idea of what's going to start happening when we go out to these places and our enemy is not human. And there's mm. something else out there that you have to worry about mm. when you're working, yeah. when you're mining, when you're surveying, whatever it is. And I think that's what grabbed me about this video more than anything was the mm. idea of like right now, if you go out somewhere by yourself, the most you have to worry about is the wind blowing you over. But I'm looking yes. forward to the time where when you're working, you've got to watch your back, not because of pirates or anything else, but because there's mm. something out there in the dark that could come up on you. And someone mentioned it i think admiral kusanagi mentioned it by saying you know being out by yourself well admiral to look at it this way if if you do all the right things there's no scary movie so we got to always have the stupid stuff that you do in order to make a good uh. scary movie but i love the fact that i don't know if it was ramar or no it wasn't ramar it was uh scavenger said i'm a solo player and i carry a coda <laughs> so he keeps his 50 millimeter with him uh when he goes out to to uh to to, to gain I just like the idea of what happens when you're out there by yourself and you run into something like this. You know, it doesn't have to be zombies. It could be the Boreal Stalker. It could be whatever it is. So, um, again, I like some of the technical aspects to it. They definitely used the darkness to help with the work that they did with the compositing, which was really good. Um, and it was just a little bit different. They did this right before Halloween. So it was kind of a Halloween thing when it was launched out a few days ago. Okay. Mm, okay. All right, we have one more real question, then we're going to wrap up. But this mm -hmm. is from Optimus Incorp or Incorporated. Do you think CIG's priorities will change as they more than double their staff? If so, how? Do you think CIG's priorities will change no. if they more than double no, their because, staff? Because, no. because the addition of their staff is a part of, you know, guys, I know this is, we have to, we, we forget that, you know, CIG has, you know, just like you guys do, we do short-term planning, mid-term, long-term planning. And their expansion is not something that's new to us. I mean, to them, you know, they knew they were going to expand. It's new to us, you know, and hearing the news now is us. It's all a part of their plan and development. So I wouldn't take this as like something big is shifting beyond what they've told us. The fact that they are putting more emphasis on Squadron 42. Obviously, they mentioned that, and we also see that they're expanding with employees. So we can kind of get the idea of what's going on. But I think that we've all agreed on this show before. Our guests, the, the co-hosts, have talked about the importance of Squadron 42 at this point. So our citizen is always going to be that work in progress that grows and grows and develops. But Squadron 42 is really their thing that they have to get out. So we kind of think that everything you're seeing is a part of that. Chris saying, hey, I'm leaving the States to go over to the U.K., so we can kind of get on this thing. Them talking about the dev shifting from some of the other project lines to start working on Squadron 42. You know, that that's just kind of wh where their in energy is. And and it it would happen if you were a smaller studio. So like, mm -hmm. you know, when I when I worked on Kerbal Space Program, if we'd have gotten an infusion of a couple million and been able to hire another 30 devs, then yes, mm -hmm. our priorities would have shifted drastically. You know, mm -hmm. like, hey, maybe we can, you know, uh, build our own engine now or we can hire voice actors for something or like you know obviously our priorities would have shifted but when you're talking a studio that has 140 some job openings on the website right now <laughs> let alone you know um what's coming down the pipeline in a mm -hmm. studio that's been growing constantly for almost 10 years mm -hmm. now it's 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 just going to allow them to do more faster mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's my opinion on it yeah all right well, up next we have is Star Citizen the next second life that's coming on Sunday, November fourteenth. <laughs> <laughs> Someone like that title. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna have Dark Knight seventy five, Griffin Gaming RPG, and Jay Darkcaster, and our special guest will be Joe. That that's what's written down. My bad. That's what's written down. Jay Starwatcher. Right. I keep writing down the wrong. Did I write down Starcaster again? Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I've got everything <laughs> together. I just, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry about man. it, dude. I just copied and pasted. Man. Yeah, that's my fault. I'm an old man. Forgive that's me, Jay. Right. Oh, I wish I could have been a part of that one. I've been playing Second Life since it came Rain. out. We, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you already have yeah, four people. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but uh, Griffin, you, you want to take over? 
No, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. There are, you know, this is, a, it'll be an interesting conversation um, where we will be talking about, for those of you who aren't familiar with Second Life, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about some games that are comparative to um, Star Citizen and just the whole idea of the people who want to literally step into this game in a much more meta way uh, than just playing it as a game. But really, um, we'll think about... Um, how they spend the time in the game, living in Star Citizen. That's the best way I can describe it. You know, living uh -huh. in Star Citizen, not just playing Star Citizen. Um, so that'll be our conversation this Sunday. Yeah. And that'll be Sunday, 11, 14, 8 p.m. Eastern. That is at 1 a.m. UTC now on, on, on Monday, I guess. No, no longer midnight because of the time change. So, yeah, stay tuned. It should be a lot of fun. And John is, is always a lot of fun. That's going to be a, a, a hopping topic, I, I, I think. So, yeah, looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it as well. We may have to put Joe Run in rehab after this show, though. I can tell you about that. <laughs> have no, an intervention? Oh, intervention for sure. Oh, for sure. You know, <laughs> Joe, Run, Joe Run is, like, like ready to literally, like, pick up his life. And, like, if he could step through the screen and live in Star Citizen, he's ready. He's ready yeah, to I'm go. Not, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying. We'll tell you that know. in a minute. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for joining us. I'm a Kushinagi, Dark Knight, Fist to Face, Go Map, Hodo, J2, J, Karate, Pot Face, Rain Cloud. <sighs> <laughs> thank you all for joining us. <laughs> I got a good laugh from Griffin. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, this is the biggest crowd we've ever had before, I think, too. Uh, it's close. It might be tired, but it might be close, yeah. Uh, oh, also, um, tomorrow on uh, The People's Radio, we have... Um, Red Huntress doing a mix live show, at 2100 UTC, so check mm -hmm. out for that. Um, oh yeah, we wanted to say, oh, no, he, 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 he's still here, so I already said his name. So I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Oh, oh Matt, whoa, though, thank whoa. you for the, for the uh, five gift subs at the thank end of the you, show, Matt thank style. you. And so who are we writing? Oh, I blah, blah. sorry. I zoned out again. I zoned out again. I was thinking of Le oh, Levan. Levan, okay. Okay. Yep, so yep, 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 yep. We can go to Levan. All right. So um, check him out and, and give him my love. And I just want to say peace, love, and soul. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Check us out Sunday. <laughs>